Welcome. Welcome. Hey. Uh, congrats on Born on First. And dang, Blanco, thank you for for the two months. Wow. Um. Yeah, that's that's it's pretty pog, pretty awesome of you. <laughs> um I've been on one in three days. Oh man. I, I really hope that you'll be able to uh, find a bit of um peace and quiet at some point soon. Um I did hear about or you you, did, you were talking about like having to run the store or having to take care of a store and that being a lot of work <laughs> but yeah, i do hope you'll you'll get some downtime soon dude like <laughs> uh i'm i'm just grateful that that you're here at all and uh, willing to support me like this <laughs> It's pretty awesome. And uh I've I've missed this. I've I've actually missed this and I've I've missed you guys. I've been on an unplanned hiatus because the heat was really murdering me and um and I was just drained, completely drained. But it's a bit better now. It's still really hot overall, but I've been getting some stuff done. So that means I my mind is a little bit clearer, so I can focus a bit on streaming again, which is nice. Oof, and return to this game, which I haven't touched in like two or three weeks. That's that's a long time. Um. I did do a little bit of a grind in between. Um, I think I gained like three levels or something, not too much. Um, but that was a good thing because I realized that after beating the last, after beating chapter one, for some reason, I didn't have any um, spawn point or teleport point for chapter two. Which means I had to do the last bit of chapter 1 again anyway. Just to transfer to chapter 2 again and then properly pick up a uh, spawn point there. Yeah, it it really has. And, um, and I learned that my uh, meds, my antidepressants actually make me more dehydrated than normal. So it's been really tough. And I mean, I forget to drink already. <laughs> I'm I'm already not very good at keeping up with that, so it's been. Uh. Yeah, it's it's been rough. But right now it's like 21 degrees. <laughs> Thank you for that. Right now it's like 21 degrees, which means I can have all of my windows open. Yeah, I try. Um, I'm. I just forget about basic things like drinking, or or showering, or eating, or sleeping, or things like that. So. <clears throat> Yay, autistic brain. <clears throat> In any case, yeah, this game is a bit odd in the sense that you respawn at the uh, f last rebirth fountain that you picked up. And since I haven't picked up one in chapter 2 yet, I need to travel there again. For some reason. But, we're here now. Alright. So, the last time we left this game, which was a while ago... We finished chapter one. We murdered the, the Telkin. That very surprisingly had a boss fight. Like, I was not expecting that. Um, and now we're in Egypt. So let's see. Imhotep, Order of Prometheus Sage. Greetings, traveler. I am Imhotep. Honorable Phaedrus has praised your accomplishments and sent word of your coming. 
Even the heroes of legend might have met their match in a telkin. Yet you have stood triumphant where others would have failed. Greece is not the only land plagued with monsters and other unnatural creatures. Egypt is also in chaos. The pharaoh has fled their palace and is now in hiding. Entire armies cannot stop the monsters. Without the gods, our cause is lost. Death and slavery are our only future. I know a way we can contact the godly realm, e even though the conduit was destroyed. There is an ancient invocation ceremony that might allow us to summon the gods. You, you must go to the great library of Rakotis and locate the scroll of invocation. I must warn you to use <laughs> caution as monsters have broken into the archives. I cannot aid you in this task, for I am no warrior. I have pressing business in Sayas. Once you have obtained the scroll, bring it to me there. I will be in the Temple of Ptah. All our hopes rest with you now. This dude, this, I don't know, it seems very funny. It seems very sus as well. Like, just look at this guy. But I like the voice acting. Um... And I also like the fact that the ancient world apparently had really fast communication. Like, I went to this place immediately. I'm the first messenger. But, um, word of what has happened already reached Egypt. So, okay. Yeah, the voice acting in this game is amazing. Like, there are a lot of really good things in this game. And it's, it's just sadly overlooked. Okay, let's see if he has any more, anything more to say. Let's pray the scroll of invocation can bring our cries of despair to the gods. It must. If not, all hope is lost. Okay, yeah, this, this dude is awesome. <laughs> the scroll describes an ancient invocation ceremony. Oh yeah, have fun at work. Eye, and, and thank you again but for, for resubscribing the and, and for dropping in. Okay. Who are you? Monsters in Greece too. So they are everywhere. Ah, but things can't be as bad as they are here. It's not possible. <laughs> yeah, have fun. Have fun. Okay. Um let's see. I did pick up Where is that lazy boy? Something. Oh, hello. Yes, I did pick up a, um, is it this one? Yes, it's this one. So I found a formula for an artifact. Um, and I haven't made this artifact yet because I wanted to do it on stream. I've never made an artifact in this game before. So I wanted to see what it's like. Uh, so I need the scroll of the warrior song. I need the bat fang and I need... Prometheus flame this thing So let's see what it's like That's it. We're out of space. <laughs> Okay, uh, yeah So this thing this thing this thing all right, let's see what it does Yes, ooh So plus four percent elemental damage which is nice Burn damage over three seconds. Okay, it just adds the burn damage. It's nice. Elemental resistance and four total speed. Um, yeah, it just gives us a couple more stats, which is nice. Artifacts. Artifacts are powerful magical talismans that bestow unique powers on their owners. Artifacts must be equipped. Place your artifact in a slot near your character's feet. <laughs> As artifacts grant unusual bonuses to your character, greater and divine artifacts might also grant powerful passive skills. Aha, okay. That's interesting. Um Right, let's see. Is there any Hurry. The monsters will be here. What anything cool? Quick, before I pack up. Um No, 
looks looks like the stuff I have is already pretty good. Mm. Uh, all right, yeah, this plus one to all skills in storm mastery. Right, I, I remember. That's an amazing staff. Okay. In the realm of the gods, things are as they are for all of time. When each day is done, Atum Ra, beneficent god of the sun, descends from the sky. There it is that he must set off in the boat of Ma'at to travel the murky waters of night. For without the boat in those dark waters, he would be extinguished. And there, too, lurks a pip, the giant serpent formed at the start of time, mm. coiled just before dawn in the tenth region of night. As Ra passes by, a pip leaps out, and enormous jaws, gaping wide, tries to devour the sun god. But fortunately, Ra is strong. And on his boat rides a host of gods who struggle with the monster serpent and fight it back and ensure that when the new day comes, the sun will rise again. I love this. Like, this is essentially unnecessary to the game, right? It doesn't give you any mechanical things. It doesn't really tell you anything of the story. It's just background and it's it's mythological real world mythological background uh fully voice acted right um and it's amazing that they have this in here they already had that in in greece with the stories of the various heroes and such like hercules uh, or heracles in in greece and um daedalus and icarus and such and now with with the sun chariot like rising or or the sun barge pulling the the sun um and in egyptian mythology and and that's like fully voice acted you don't need this but they put that in anyway so that people can learn a bit about about ancient mythology and that's amazing a strange news travels the roads these days they say the monsters are nothing compared to what lies ahead there are whispers of an ancient sorcerer, powerful and cruel, who has come to our land. You know what they call it? Telkin, that <laughs> They say it was here in Rakotis and then headed up the Nile. Okay, so more Telkin. So the Telkin are kind of like the, the thread that binds everything together. Ah, okay, this is where the fountain is, right. It's not safe here. The city is overrun. We cannot hold out. I must stay here and stand guard. But ah, if only I had my sword. Okay, that's quite obvious. We fought bravely, but they outnumbered us ten to one. The only thing to do is fall back. Keep telling yourself that. Uh, is my aura active? Now it is. Okay. You're back? Yeah, sure. No problem. And also, I love how many of these I shoot out now with a single, single shot. Um, like what, five? That's, this is cool. I, just look at, look at how detailed the environments are. And for a game that's like yeah when did this come out 2004 something like that um or 2006 i i don't quite remember somewhere around there but yeah this game is old and and just look at this this is like really beautiful environments look at the, the hieroglyphics here so much detail this is amazing it's so pretty like like you just want to explore can i shoot something through there nope 
it does fan out quite a bit so it's more useful in in open areas <laughs> are you okay <laughs> Oh wow, that 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 person could run. <laughs> okay. <laughs> These animations. Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh... <laughs> this is this is hilarious. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Uh, this game is... Okay, what's this? It's a frostbite shrine? Okay. It's... It's like it tries to tell a real epic story, but then at the same time you get things like that. So it's... I don't know if it's intentional. Right, if... If the, the developers just Need went... Nah, we, we just can't get it any better. Not enough energy. Or if they intentionally said, "All right, let's 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 make that run animation a bit comical <laughs> to to add a bit of levity to this game," because there's a lot of instances in this game where it like doesn't quite take itself so seriously. Um. And, like, it doesn't try to be all dark and gritty and such, right? Unlike, um, unlike Diablo, unlike even Dungeon Siege, right? And then unlike something like Path of Exile, um, as a more modern example, like, Path of Exile is dark. <laughs> it is. Wow. Um... Right, so so this one might go for a bit of, you know what, the world we're building is pretty and and like a bit not ridiculous, but it has a bit of levity to it. I'm just walking in circles because, you know, this place is beautiful. Okay, let's see. Right. I think that area there, I couldn't go through. <laughs> yeah, okay, so that is the way forward. But look at this place! This place is so cool! Like you could totally imagine like a, a more traditional RPG or adventure game maybe, like taking place in a setting like this. All right, with like NPCs running around and just, just like in a town. That was really cool. Ah, uh, this is this is pretty. What's the shrine of healing? Okay. Nice. Of essence of Anubis wrath, so there's more, um, more of those relics. There's now those specific to Egypt. Okay, um, there's apparently a lot of them then to to collect. <laughs> Just expands the loot list. And expands the RNG or drops. But I guess it makes sense. You wouldn't find things like Prometheus Flame or Achilles Might or, or whatever it was uh, in Egypt. That would be a bit weird. So I, I kind of get it. All right, I believe this is actually the place to get to the next area. So I want to see. I want to explore. Right. Need more energy. Like I said, this entire map is handcrafted. Nothing is random. 
or nothing nothing of, of the the uh geography so to speak is random um so i do want to explore this i do want to see what was built all right and any any hidden corners any caves and such uh i do want to see because it is very pretty look at this Okay, bit of a lighting issue there. Um, but that's fine. Doo -doo -doo. Ah, okay. So I just I just click on it. All right. Spell piece. The head of a spell scroll. Huh. Is it the spell scroll, the invocation that we have to find? Also, does this does this continue, or is this a dead end? Yeah, no, I cannot actually get through here. The map makes it look like it continues. Kinda. Oh, look at this. You could just imagine yourself walking through here in in a yeah in a more traditional RPG or so. And this is this is so pretty. Um, is this something I can? Okay, yeah. Okay, then then I've been up here. That is also something I cannot get through, I believe. Um, yeah, all right. So let's continue here. This is the only path left. Well, I say that, <laughs> and then I discover this path. Aha, there is a cave. Let's go. Oh man, these these enemies are small, quick, hard to see. Um, uh -huh, experience shrine. There we go. All right, so this is literally just to grind some experience. Yeah, small. Not enough energy. What are those? Repugnant decay. What? Ow! Tomb rot. So this is like what slime? It's magical slime that 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 awoke somehow. Oh. Anyway, use this. Need more energy. Ow, okay, they really hurt. And if you get hit, you get slowed, which uh which is really rough. Ow, that was That was close. <laughs> they deal a ton of damage. Rigid carapace. These things I think don't change, right? The monster drops, um, the monster parts. Because monsters are universal, so to speak. Huh. Oof. All right. Need more energy. Also, the whole like you generally do not have a lot of energy 
at once. So... Wait, what? Are you telling me I had to go through this cave? Then what did I miss? I thought this cave was just a side area. With the uh, experience shrine and all. But apparently it's not. So what's this? Is this a side area? Is this another way to go to where I need to? I'm a little bit confused. Oh hey, it's a boss monster. Family Sword of Anheru. Ah. There it is. Oh, is this... Yeah, this is just the city again. Oh, hey. That's cool. I can't go through there, but, you know, that's... That's cool. That kind of makes the circle. That's very efficient map layout. Rakotis Library. Can I open these? No. Not uh, enough energy. So Rakotis Library is where I need to find the scroll, right? That's that's the main quest. So what was that area with the cave? I'm I'm confused. Like what's here? Is this where it continues? Hmm. Let's see. This is this is also cool. This is I always love verticality in maps. And I mean it's not you cannot go down here, right? This is just a, a 2D map, effectively. Um but just visually having this verticality in here adds so much depth, really, um, to to this place. I thank the gods that you are here. I have done everything I could to keep the beasts from the library, but now these things are everywhere, even in our archives below. These monsters are burning and destroying everything with no respect for the knowledge our sacred scrolls hold. Please stop them. Oh, that's rough. We keep the scrolls below. Somehow these monsters found their way in. I don't know how. They'll ruin everything. Okay. Right, that's not a path. Um. Okay, I will be back just two minutes. I need to refill my water and turn on my fan and such. Um, so I will, yeah, I will be back just very, very quickly.
uh, and I'm back. Okay, I have more water. I have my fan. Let's go. All right, library archives. Let's find that scroll. Also like that you're finding a lot of potions still. Nice. This this feels so awesome now. I can still remember in the beginning when I was shooting out one of these and it didn't it didn't uh, pierce or anything. It was just very slow going and now this is a true AoE skill. This feels good. All right, what did I pick up? Hunga Munga. Huh. Is that? Yeah, that's a throwing knife. That's one of these special throwing knives. Huh. All right, Grim Falcata of... I always find a lot of swords and shields that are special. But nothing really for, for a caster. I mean, I found a few things for a caster, but I found a lot of things that are not for a caster. Like just overall caster, right? Not just my specific... Um... Uh, skills like storm magic and such but just in general caster it's a lot more weapon people things but I guess that's uh, that's loot RNG for you ah hello ah uh, that was cool Not enough energy. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Look at us just like throwing lightning at each other. Um I do think I need to head back to town soon, which is not bad because I have that one side quest to hand in. How much does this cost, actually? Eh. 81, that's quite a bit. Yeah, the more levels you put into it... Oh, this is... Okay. Couldn't see. The more Not levels you put into it and the more passives you stack onto it, uh, the more expensive the skill becomes. Kind of makes sense. Other games do that as well, but it's just you really feel the cost. Especially because you're. Uh, because of the way the skill points work, when you increase the power of a skill, um, the cost goes up. But you also need those skill points to increase your um, your energy, right? And and that doesn't go up at the same rate as the cost. Um, so you really feel it. Um, which is why just putting points into mastery to gain a couple of passive stats might not be a bad thing oh hi also what are these things I, I never bothered to check jackalman your inventory, your inventory is, full. is full oh there we go can I play some Tetris not really Okay. Let's go.
Okay. Um, sell off some things first. Oh, this one looks cool. Um, but mine is better. Yeah. Sell all of these that I don't use. Um, no. No. are nice plus 130 energy wow also i don't get why i have reserved energy like where does that come from mm, does it come from this does it come from the curses Curse of the Arrow, Nano Pierce, Fragile Vitality, Festering Wounds. Mm. Like, if I turn the aura off, it doesn't fill up the reserved mana. So, I don't know. What's happening here? This one's nice because it gives me a lot of energy. But right now I think I still like the plus one to all to the to the skills. Uh wow, this one gives a lot of health. What's that? Wow. Okay. Yeah, no, this one's... <gasps> this is so much energy now! Wow! Yeah, no, mine is, mine is still better. Uh... No. Look at that! This is like... Just, just... Flat energy, just super powerful. Man. Okay, this is just too good. Um, I'll wear that. Let's do health regen, health regen, and... Ah, these are so nice. Um, some of these are really nice. I'm really struggling. Bye. See if I want to keep them or not. Um, let's hand in the sword for now. My sword. You found it. Well, I must thank you, warrior. No, no, no. I feel it is my duty to repay your kindness. Don't refuse. Take this. Essence of Amun-Ra's glory? Oh, okay. Got uh, an essence. Nice. Okay, where is the caravan dude here? What? Do you need something? Okay, let me just put these in here for now just just so i can have them and and decide what to do with them later on um and then this is yeah one of the the pieces here ah right right click does that okay Yes, yes. Uh, come again. 
<laughs> that dude is very sus. A strange news travels okay. the road. We had that. Um Right. Let's go back to the library. I need to read up on what this reserved mana is. Like why why I have this reserved bit and it is quite a bit. Oh ghosts. It's like a third of my mana is reserved. Uh, so that, I just don't have that available to cast spells, so I don't know what's up with that. Whoa! Sneak attacks and all that. What? That's rude. Okay, there's ghosts in here. That doesn't sound like that doesn't seem good. Um How do I get down here? Ah, that room. Doo -doo. Come on. There we go. Like the the shards that shoot out are random, more or less. Like I can control the general direction, but the individual shards are more or less random. I think there's one that goes where I where I click or that goes go straight where I want it to, but the rest, how they spread and such. Is seems seems to be random, and they might even just completely be on one side instead of spread evenly on both sides, right? Like you had one that goes where I went, and then you had one more that went to the right, and three that went to the left. So yeah, and now the other way around. So it does appear quite random, and I don't think I can control it like I've tried clicking close and clicking far Need more energy. Um, but I don't think that really does anything unlike in in some other games where that you can at least manipulate the spread by clicking close or far from your character and and where the spread is is just even completely even um, actually, let me try this right now. So if I click all the way over here, right, I get this kind of spread. If I click all the way over here. Oh, they don't fly as far in general. Huh. That's, that's interesting. So if I click f out here, they fly all the way out there. If I click close to here, they just stop. At some point, instead of keep going further. Ha! Huh. That is very strange. I don't know if that's intentional or if that's just... Like... A weird way that they chose to program these, these skills. Uh... Okay. But it didn't seem to influence the spread. Like, the spread was still mostly the same. Um, so, yeah, it does seem to be quite random, which does make it a bit difficult to aim with it. Um, but I guess this is just a, a spray and pray kind of skill um, for large groups, which might mean that I do want a skill for single target. At some point. Um, Alright, this, this looks like a boss room. Um, mysterious door. Yeah. While I'm waiting for my energy to recharge, let me do read up if... Um, Uh, what 
the reserved energy does. Titan quest reserved energy. Oh, and thanks for the redeems, Unborn. Alright, let's go. <laughs> Big stretch. Oi. Ow. Okay, my back. <laughs> and then hydrate. Mm. Yeah, everyone, please stay hydrated as well. Oh. Okay, let me just... Why is my energy reserved? Ah, so it is the curses. So it is, it is these. So they make it slightly more difficult. They make the game even more difficult in that regard. So I have six curses. Each curse reserves 5%. So six curses is uh, 30%. Okay, looks about right. Yeah, 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 okay. What's in here? Oh, oh, oh. I see you. Scarab, insect, king, blah, person. Ow. Ow. Wow, I was down to like 25 health or so. What is this? Wait, why can I not... Hit this dude. Rip. <laughs> okay. Well. Um. Okay. That fight is pretty tough. Like it, the the poison, when it hits you, it deals quite a bit of damage, and then it slows you. Oops, this is not the right way. And apparently it has a dot, so uh, that's that's a lot of things at once. And then you have those fast, small ads that are difficult to hit, that just rush at you and and deal damage. That's it's a lot of um, things stacked against you. But ah well, I'm almost the next level. Um, so that's something to look forward to. Doo -doo. Yeah, the scarabs here should have tipped me off. Okay, let's pick up. Nope. Oof. There we go. And for some reason, it seemed like I couldn't damage this dude. out of my max range but the projectiles just look like they keep going huh can I just drink a potion ah wow that, that was horrible also his hitbox is kind of wonky compared to his model I think Whew. I just got the achievement found a bug. <laughs> um, 
Like, it looks like some of my projectiles should hit, but then they just pass by and don't do damage. I don't know, it looked, it looked a bit wonky. But, ah well. At least I got a lot of XP, and I'm getting a lot of nice stuff. Whoa, that's a lot of stuff. Yay stuff, I don't know what I'm picking up. I'm just, I'm just clicking everything here. All right. All right. Um, scroll of invocation. Whoa, this looks cool. Look at this. This looks so cool. I'll explore the room a bit first. Okay, there's nothing more here. Oh, these... What are these? Monkeys, macaques, or something like that. Huh. Yay, I has the scroll. Hathor Basin? Huh, this is this is the same place as I came out through the cave. Well, alright. Um just just the other side, kind of. At least it looks like it on the map. Sand swept cave. I'm confused. I'm so confused. Where's what? How are, are these areas connected or not? This is okay. I I need to get to the bottom of this. Um, are these two areas connected? It does not actually look like they are. Anyway, let's let's go back. Um, because I found the scroll. Oh wait, no, the dude said he'll be waiting for me somewhere else. If you'll fight the monsters, I'll sell. But hurry! Uh... No. Uh... It was nice health, but I really need energy. Um... Do I take health regen or do I take flat health? I think I'll take health regen right now. Mm. And these background noises make it feel a bit like I'm in, in Baldur's Gate. 5% elemental resistance, energy regeneration, 3% experience gained? Oh, this is tempting. This is tempting. Mm. Ah, okay, interesting. I need dexterity for that. Ha. Huh. So at some point I need to raise a bit of dexterity. I mean I have 81. I'm I'm pretty close, but this is tempting. Let me let me try wearing this one for now. Um nope. 
and then um, be careful. Let me see. What? If need if I if I I miss the stats on this one or not. Um. So long. Okay. Um. And I will not go through the portal. I will explore that cave thing again. I'll, ex I'll explore that cave area. Because I, I want to know... What's, what the deal is. With that play. Also, this well. I cannot go down there. That's like... That's like a, a, a prime... Indicator for some sort of dungeon entrance. <laughs> but alas. Not in this game. I mean, at least I don't have to fight anything anymore. Right? And the cave isn't too big. Um, oops. This way. Yeah. So I do want to find out what... Because it doesn't look like I can enter the library from the back. So I don't know what what the deal is with having this cave lead. Oh, and there's a chest I missed. Well, worth. Already worth. <laughs> like what the deal is with having this area. a lot of gold okay um look out cave so this this is seriously just a little ledge this is it wow Oh, okay. Nah. Oh, well. Now we've solved the mystery, at least. And got a bit of gold. Well, quite a bit of gold, actually. Um... I don't know which way is faster. Let me just go through the portal. We'll return to town. Actually, I don't have to return to town. I can just do this, I believe. And it sends me to the last activated fountain, which is right here. Ah! Nice. What is that? Uh... Virtue? Stone Mastery. All skills? Oh, that looks cool. But I gain a level. Awesome. Um, intelligence. Always intelligence. And now this thing. Um, okay, I'm looking for a single target spell. A good single target spell. Storm Surge. Hmm. Lightning Bolt. No, that's, that's conforming to Chain Lightning. Squall. No, that's a debuff. Thunderball. Uh, Spellbreaker. Is there a good single target spell here? Turn in attack. Estral Aura, Life Drain. turns it into an AOE um, 
Dark Covenant. Now that's... Turn health into mana. Summon Lich King. Um, Circle of Power, Soul Vortex. Okay, I think... I think I do want to work towards the Lich King. Mm. That means... I have enough points in this mastery right now to max out this, so I do want more points in Spirit Mastery. Yeah, let's do that. Um, because having... having Someone else fight alongside me is probably not a bad idea. Yeesh, that's that's rough. Okay. And I don't see a good single target spell. Like, I see some spells that that are good single target, but where the passive doesn't help that. Where the passive turns them into... More energy. Oops. Um, into AoE spells again. And... Uh, so that's essentially... I cannot power up those spells in a way that that benefits the um the need for single target if that makes sense right it's like if i power up the spell it it doesn't help what i want it to do um and if i don't power up the spell then that means well i I don't have a spell as powerful. Right, the spell just does not have the potential need more to go where where I need it to be. Um Dang. These dudes are big. Another cave! Regeneration shrine. Let's, let's head in here. Ah, there's another experience shrine. Okay, so that regen shrine was kind of wasted. Oh, I did not see that one. Hello. What is that? Yeek. Ah, it's disgusting. Reminds me of the maggot infestation I had in my kitchen not too long ago. Lesson learned. Do not leave trash in the trash can for too long. <laughs> like, it was really just I didn't empty out my trash can in time. And then I got a whole bunch of maggots in there. So, hooray. Um... Does this... Where does this lead now? Is this another ledge? Or is this... Man, this, this map is really... Branching, that's... Huh. 
a lot of different pa oh hi hello boss monster whoa <laughs> uh okay this dude runs huh okay but it looks like this is really just a side area with a boss monster and a bunch of nice chests and such which is good let's see what we got lots of gold anything back here no Honed Angon. What? What is an a spear? Apparently. But yeah, this is this is just another ledge. Okay. Now I know what the designers had in mind. So instead of a final boss room, you exit the cave onto a ledge. And that's where you have the actual final boss fight. Good to know. Do I really have 140 health potions? I have 140 health potions. Huh. I'm gonna have more now. But only eight energy potions, so I might have to buy some at some point. Anything back here? Nope. Okay. Oh, this looks nice. This this water looks so refreshing, especially now with the heat. It's like oh, I just want to dive in there. Uh, I also can't wait. <clears throat> I'm, I'm I'm getting rid of a whole bunch of old furniture, um, and it's gonna be picked up next week, like in one week's time, and then I will finally have space because I have an inflatable pool. Hey, more hydrate! Thank you for that redeem. But yeah, I have an inflatable pool, and once all that extra furniture is out, I will have space to set up that inflatable pool, and then I can es help escape the heat. There's something out there, something big that prowls at night. They talk of camels missing in the morning and caravans being attacked. Nobody's sure what it is, but they say it lives in a cave somewhere in Wajet Canyon. Okay. It is rumored that any warrior who <coughs> defeated will be granted a magical blessing. Oh, that's tempting. Whatever it is, the thing prowls at night attacking caravans and travelers. For all I know, the stories about this giant beast may be true, or they may not. But if they are, I'll tell you, the Telkin that passed through here probably riled it up. What is that accent? Also, I like his line. It's just like, yes, I know the story is true or not. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's like, so what, what are you doing? What are you saying, man? Telkin. Know what that is? Telkin. Know what that is? Yeah, I you murdered one. You do not one. want to travel these ways unarmed. From what I hear, monsters are getting into the cities now, too. Soon, nowhere will be safe. I lost hope after we came back from fighting an Ayuno. I don't know what became of my wife and child, but our house was burned down and our cattle slaughtered. Sounds rough. Insert the whole... Like... Uh, I ain't reading all that, but... Uh, I'm sorry, or happy. Whatever. Um, I'm sorry to hear that, or happy for you. <laughs> Whichever one applies. That that meme. A 
a hail ring probably with like health or something or strength let's see yeah 19 percent strength 10 percent health that wow okay like percentage bonuses like this can be immensely broken like imagine you're actually playing a strength character and you have like let me let me check how much int i have i have 360 int ah, whoa hello is this the beast doom raider hero oh what that was there are all these dots everywhere that just randomly murder me um but yeah if i have 362 in an in int then a strength build will probably have a uh, a comparable amount in strength and then plus 19 percent as like what plus 70 strength give or take that's massive and 10 percent health like wow that ring is is powerful if you're playing a tank build that's exactly what you want oh yeah there's all these unexpected dots right i i'd murder that 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 boss that mini boss but then something he did dealt damage over time and then i i died from it so eh Oh, another. Oh, wait, what? Oh, hey, blink strike. Okay. How? Wow, I could not heal fast enough through that. That that was rough. Yeah, maybe it's poison, but but I think there's a lot of different dots. There's also like. If I check here, um, what what is there's probably like bleed as well, um, burn, freeze, lightning. Like every single one of these probably has a dot associated with them. All right? There's bleed. There's poison. There's vitality. I don't even know what that is, but there's each of the elemental ones has a base thing, and then it has a a dot type like burning, frost burn, uh, electro damage, whatever they call it in this game. Everything has a dot associated with it. Um, and I don't know how those apply. Like the uh, the damage mechanics in this game are are a little bit obscure. All right, I don't know if any source of fire damage, for example, can apply burning, or if it must be specific skills uh, that that have burning damage or if any attack can apply burning if the monster just happens to also have burning on it right like i i don't know like i have that you know apparently um i have burn damage without needing to deal fire damage so it's a bit yeah it's a bit there's a lot of of damage mechanics and such going on in this game um like you can tell there's there's 
eight types of base resistance. Alright, including like physical and pierce, okay, melee and range, physical damage, and then like what is vitality? <laughs> you know, what 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 is vitality damage? I don't know. But then there's things like slow and and trap and energy and and disruption and petrification and and what is this sleep <laughs> and freeze and, and that, like there's a lot going on All right so pet bonuses like what do i do Yeah, I I don't weapon damage as health weapon damage as elemental and I I don't know, it's just a lot happening. Um, so I I don't think I'm gonna bother learning about all of those because like even if I learn about all of them, there's there's not much I can really do. Um. Because there's so many stats, right? They, there's also a lot of stats that can appear on, on gear. And gear is mainly just a handful of, of stats. It's, it's either one of your attributes, uh, health and energy, or energy resist, uh, energy, uh, energy. The, the, the regen, basically. Right, that's all the stats there are and then offensive and defensive ability which is yet another thing in this game right so that that's basically all the stats there are on gear so it's not like you can optimize for a particular damage type anyway because there's just too much and you don't find the stuff on gear anyway um So it's really just, okay, I just need to know there's a lot of dots in this game, I need to watch out for them, and expect to take damage even after I've killed an enemy, or after I've run away. And and that's, that's all there is to it, like I... There's... It's... It's spread too thin. Need more energy. Right, there are so many stats and only so many pieces of gear and so many items that you find um that optimizing is is like playing the lottery <laughs> you can't effectively build for anything because it's just spread out too much why am i not hitting this dude what the okay um, unlike some other games, right? Unlike, and I keep comparing this to Path of Exile, um, probably because Path of Exile does a lot of things right, and because I've played a lot of Path of Exile, so I know it relatively well. Um, okay, this cave looks like a side area again. Uh, the spread. Like, you mean the, um, the, the spread of stats? Um, because that's, that's, oops, huh, okay. Oh, hey, yeah, there's a, oh, it's a scorpion dude, hello. Oh hey, he, he charges. Not enough energy. And he heals. Yay. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, maybe. But I did try to shoot with some things that don't spread. Um Ah well, it's that's that's fine. I did hit him in the end. Um Your inventory is full. Well, yeah, in, in Path of Exile, for example, um, you have very 
clear. Hold on. Very uh, a handful of very clear stats, and um, all right. Can I get one more into here? It, it seems like I should be able to. Um, and those stats appear reasonably often on on gear that you can actually build for it and and it's also like there are not a lot of enemies in this game right this game is is slower paced and not as dense as as other arpgs so there's not as many enemies and not as many enemies means not as much gear overall um and that reduces the the what what am I t talking about? <laughs> the the chance or the uh, the ability. <coughs> oh, sorry. Oh. Well, yeah, that reduces the ability to. You have no more room. To, wait, what? Oh, oh, that's right, 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 right. That's one of those uh, two by two by fours. Uh, let's play some extreme Tetris. Um, but yeah, it reduces the ability to to optimize a build even more towards something specific. Seems like I should have the space. I should be able to. Should be able to make this work. Uh. Come on. <laughs> Inventory Tetris. What if I do? This is now a puzzle game. <laughs> Welcome to Inventory Tetris, the puzzle game. I need a single 2x4. And it... F I, I have enough free space. I just need to arrange it to get a 2x4 somewhere. Hmm. <laughs> yes, Resident Evil item management. Yes, exactly. Same, same deal. Uh... So I need... Hold on. Okay, now I can go back to town. <laughs> puzzle game, puzzle solved. <laughs> now we can continue with the actual game. Yes. All right, let's see. Uh, nope. I don't actually need this staff. Like, how much gold do I get? 1600 not bad but i have one and a half million gold like what do i need gold for really in this game i don't know i just like collecting stuff i guess um like at some point like you can 
also filter items further. Oops, that was not what I wanted to sell. That's a special one. Right, so... No, that, that was... Huh? Which one's the, the, the green one? Oh, it's there. Um... Uh, right, this is the powerful ring. Um... Again, because of the monster and item density in this game, standard Have magic items nothing, are valuable. Right? Typically, in in a, in an ARPG like this, at some point you would just go, "Yeah, I don't care about all of these normal magic items. I'll just filter them out. I'll just go for rare items." Right? And, and that does happen relatively soon. But that's because you have a lot of monsters so with a lot of loot. And as a consequence, a lot of opportunity to find better gear. Okay, but hurry. Um, and again, that's, that's not the case. I mean, I have this much gold, I can just buy a bunch of energy. Uh, that's not the case in Bye. this game, right? Standard magic items, the yellow named ones, are still really powerful, or not really powerful. They're like the most powerful thing you'll get for for a long, long time. Um, so filtering them out is probably gonna hurt you in the long run. Hello? Uh, mouse? Left click? Hello? My left click is broken. Uh. Okay. That was weird. I couldn't move. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> so there is a there is an, a built-in item filter in the options, which is really amazing. I'm not sure if I was no, I was done with this cave. I'm not sure if I was done with another cave. Um. But also, like, if you look at the the item filter, it's like okay, I'm you can filter the. The, the broken stuff, you can fill the common stuff, which I'm doing right now. Like everything that's common or below, I'm just not seeing. And then there's like single magical, all magical. Like I don't I don't understand what what this is. What is a single magical? Right? I I don't I don't get it. Um So, maybe it's items that just have a single magical bonus instead of multiple? I don't know. Actually, let me see if, if the menu explains it to me. Nope, it just explains... It doesn't even explain the loot filter <laughs> correctly. Oh well. Um, so that's why I'm, I'm just showing magical items as well, because I'm still relying on them. Instead of rare items, even though I'm already in chapter 2, which is highly unusual. A highly unusual state for an ARPG to be in, I guess. To, to still rely so heavily on magic, base magic items. All right, uh, let's continue. Doo -doo -doo. Oh, 
Oh wait, I think I did the side quest, right? Was that Scorpion do the side quest? I believe it was. Yeah, Beast of Legend. Oh, I got two skill points. Oh! Oh! Nice! Now on the next level up, I can get my Lich King. Yay! Awesome! So it does pay to see what what those quests actually give you. Like the dude said, you get a magical blessing, but I guess magical blessing in this case means two skill points. Uh, which, okay, I'll take it. All right, the Nile floodplain. So look, there's there's actually um I don't know if, if it's like a, a theory or if it's just accepted, like completely accepted um yeah, fact or so. Energy. But um in in history there's like two big areas where civilizations grew along the rivers were Mesopotamia and Egypt, right? So the Tigris and Euphrates rivers and then the Nile River. Um, but the, uh, the, the religions that came out of these areas were completely different. Right, so the uh, the Egyptian gods were all based on on rules and or n not necessarily kind, but like there were clear cycles and and rituals and such that you could go through, um, and uh, with a lot of. Uh, yeah, expected action consequence things. I, I don't know if I'm explaining this right. <laughs> but essentially, very orderly, right? Very, almost bureaucratic in a sense, right? So the, the gods were very uh, bound by, by rules and, and rituals and laws and such. Um, whereas in... In Babylon and and Sumeria and such, uh, the the Mesopotamian civilizations, uh, the gods were very capricious and uh, like prone to just randomly messing with humanity and cruel sometimes. <laughs> and the way. One way this is explained is the behavior of the rivers that those people lived on. What does... what does what mean? Capricious? Capricious uh, means... Uh, cruel... Um, or just... How do I define that? That's a very good question. How do I, how do I define capricious? Uh, yeah, cruel would be a way to say it, or um, just um, un like chaotic, unpredictable, but always with with like a a mean and petty streak, kind of. Uh oh. That that was not quick enough. Um, so yeah, mean, cruel, chaotic, wild, that, that kind of deal. Um, so yeah, one way that is explained is is the behavior of the rivers. So the Nile, like both both areas the rivers flood 
and have big flood plains and that's that's what allowed civilizations to grow there right um, because they were ideal for for agriculture and that's that's really what costs a lot of people to be able to to get the food they needed and and to build big civilizations um but the Nile River floods very regularly right like you can you can basically time your calendar based on the Nile River's flooding um because it's just that regular right people always knew okay beginning from this and that day the nile is expected to flood and then at this and that day the floods are expected to recede so everything was very very regular and tigris and euphrates on the other hand their flooding was unpredictable um and uh because it was unpredictable it was often destructive right because the people couldn't really plan Okay, when do we Need more sow our, our crops and when do we harvest them and such? Because they, they couldn't really rely on, on calendars or seasons to, to predict when the river was going to cooperate with them, so to speak. Um, and that reflected in their mythologies, right? The regularity and... and giving nature so to speak of the nile meant that the egyptian gods were very orderly and the the chaotic nature of the tigris and euphrates means that the babylonian and sumerian gods were very uh chaotic in return right and often cruel because they could just take away all of your crops not enough energy without you being able to do anything about it because the river just suddenly flooded or it didn't flood and then you couldn't sow anything and not necessarily have reliable food supply and such which is a really interesting theory and uh and also something like just just to think about in world building how how the environment how much the environment and and like big things like the river flooding and such uh impacts society and culture right you think you would think that there is no connection generally it's like oh yeah no they're just they're just there they're just kind of using the riverbed as as uh fields you know farming fields but but no <laughs> it's apparently i think yeah i think the cave is a side area um it, it like got really ingrained into their their society and and religion and such and shaped much of their life beyond just oh we we get to have food because we live next to a river so that's that's really fascinating wait is this dude dead okay i think he's dead yeah he's not bearing for an ambush he's actually and that's also like a really fascinating aspect of of history uh in that regard that that you kind of make these connections and then realize that things like this don't just happen in a vacuum right um extend extensive religions like that come on fire your thing wow that was basically a one shot wow okay um oh more redeems <laughs> thank you okay another stretch all right all 
Ugh. And then hydrate. Uh, thank you for those, and everyone stay hydrated as well. Um, but yeah, realizing that things like this don't just kind of appear out of a vacuum. Right, that everything is interconnected in a way, and I, I, I do think if history were taught like this, it would be a lot more interesting. Um, but sadly, like many subjects, history is the victim of um, standardized testing. Because the easiest thing to test for is just facts, and the easiest fact to ask for in history is just dates and names. It's like, what year did this happen? Who was this king? Or, or, or whatever. Um, like, I still know that Christmas in 800 AD is where Charlemagne got crowned emperor. Like, I still know that because that was drilled into my brain. And that actually came up in tests, <laughs> right? So, uh, does it help me? No. It's much more interesting, like, the the story behind it is much more interesting than, than just, like, oh, Christmas 800 or Winter 800. Um, it's like... Yeah, no, it was a lot of politicking and, and, like, pressuring the Pope and such, and a lot of, like, very interesting things happening before Charlemagne could be crowned Emperor, and what significance that had uh, in the political landscape of the time and such, and, and, like, the stories behind that are really interesting, but no... You need to remember that it was in the year 800 that it happened. Like everything else is just flavors, just window dressing. It's like, yeah. It's, it's sad teaching history like this. Um. And again, that's another subject where I do believe a lot of people then say well i can't i can't do history like why why is history even important and such it's just a bunch of names and dates it's like yeah it is if you're learning for tests if you're learning for standardized tests but if you actually look at history right history is really just um looking at human behavior all of history is is basically a Not big oh come on <laughs> a big social experiment right social experiments that were run and now we see the uh the results and so we can analyze them and see oh how do people work how do humans work how do societies work more energy and that's really what what it is it's like well, we can't say if we if we make this big societal change, uh, like sometimes we can't make those changes because they're unethical um, to to our like modern uh, values. But maybe something similar happened in history somewhere. So we can see, oh, this thing happened. Okay. Uh, and then we know. Or something like, oh, like uh, some some change might have a hundred years until it takes effect. So so how do we do this? Oh, the same thing happened in history. So we can we can see how that played out, and then we can we can learn from that. And it's really just observing social experiments which sounds really crude 
But uh, that's that's really what it is. It's been hard on us. These monsters have made things hard. We don't have walls. We don't have city guards. And now, crocodiles that walk like men attack us nightly. Okay. These crocodile men raid our village. They steal our children and our livestock. And then, they're gone. You know what you should do? You should build walls. It is too much for us. How can we tend our farms? How can we work and live? Crocodile people? Yeah. I've murdered a whole bunch on my way here. <laughs> I don't know, is, that a, is there a joke in, in crocodile people? If so, I'm not familiar with it. Have you heard? A fierce breed of monsters has begun attacking our farms. It's true. I was unloading baskets of papyrus from my boat when I saw them. They crept out from the marsh along the river, then attacked our village. Oh no. I won't even venture down to the water's edge after dusk. Sounds like a you problem. Okay, let's see. Ah! Crocodile people. You can't hold anymore. Wait, what? There's a <laughs> what? That that sounds um okay. <laughs> ha! Huh. Just like randomly wage war on crocodiles. O okay. But like, why crocodiles are like one of evolutionaries? Evolution's perfect creations. They haven't changed in millions of years. So, uh, just like sharks. You must understand. Every year the oh. river Nile rises. If it didn't rise, our crops would not grow. If it rises too much, our homes and farms are swept away. Not enough, and we starve. This is our life. Okay. Good to know. Is there a shop here? There's no shop here. Okay. Alligator VTubers. Well, that, that makes sense then. Oh, there's a whole bunch of these people. Ah, so I just walk along the river's edge here. And just all of these crocodile people. Yay. Need more energy. Okay, I don't know if they're marked like this because they actually have some sort of magic effect. Or if it's just a visual marker saying that they're important for a quest. Possibly the latter? Which would be interesting. Okay. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Yes? Throw stick. I like burning throw stick. <laughs> I, I like that. It's so simple, but it gets right to the point. It's like, this is a burning throw stick. Uh. Um. All right, let's see. Nope. Uh, nope. No. Ooh. But, no. Not, not, I don't need health. Hmm, if it had a second bonus, this would be pretty cool. Okay, these rings are just like... Oh, wow, you wake up. Gather your party <laughs> Seal! Ah! Seal, hey, how are you doing? Let me get this. Hey, thank you for the raid. Let me give you a shout out. What were you doing? You were doing. Ah, across the obelisk. How was it? Did you. 
did you manage to uh make some progress and uh i don't know is it a roguelike i never actually got that <laughs> but yeah welcome i had you had a lot of hope i yeah, hope you had a lot of fun welcome raiders and hi path how are you doing um for those who don't know me my name is chichen i'm a bard vtuber i play lots of old games just like this one right now titan quest uh which is a old arpg from the mid 2000s that came out in the wake of diablo 2's success and we're currently in chapter two um so if you're down for that you are very welcome to stay um and yeah and seal if you need to rest uh lie down or go to sleep or drink or eat something please go ahead and do so uh ah oh yeah thank you very much for raiding um let's go play the play their pure roguelike mode this time Ooh, that was very nice. Congratulations. Yeah, I guess um, once you, you understand the mechanics a little bit, it uh, becomes... Wait, what is this? Becomes more manageable. <laughs> Be careful. Yeah, it's, that's nice. Just... Careful where you put everything. <laughs> uh, okay. But yeah, I'm currently. Oops, this is not what I wanted. Uh, this might be good. Here. Ah. That's it. We're out of space. <laughs> But yeah, in this game, I'm currently discovering that this game is very complex mechanically. It has a lot of things going on, and I've decided I will not bother with them. I will just play and enjoy the scenery and enjoy the stories. And enjoy the history this game is teaching. Which is pretty cool. Like, it actually has dialogue in here that's only there to teach you historical things about the cultures you're visiting um and hey yo this is cool oh he's harvesting papyrus i mean he's not doing a good job of it but you know it's, it's cool seeing him here That is one stubborn piece of papyrus. Look at that. That man's gonna be here for days. I do like these reed boats though. This is... This is really interesting. Yeah. But yeah, this, this game is... It is going good, all things considered. Um, it's like the difficulty has ramped up um, in chapter two, but other than that, it's uh, it's going good actually. Made quite a bit of progress. Let's see. Yeah, we started out here and uh, made our way all the way to the second, almost to the second town. Great Osiris, did you really kill them? Praise to you, hero! Yes, yes, thank you. What did I get? Wait. You are the one who saved us from the reptilians. To us, you are the greatest hero. We do not have much, but please, accept this thanks. Oh, okay, I get a... Demon's blood. Nice, those are relatively rare. 
You must understand. Oh yeah. I I heard this dude before. Uh oh, there's a merchant what right here. A foreigner such as you to this place along the Nile. Are you My kidding me? <laughs> All right. Uh, this actually looks nice, but no. Um. Thank you. Aha! <laughs> Exploring a little bit helps. <laughs> I would have found out that there is not only a store here, but yeah, the second portal of seven. Yeah. So we're at the second one of seven. Um, in just about two hours? This is not bad. Temple of Ptah. Alright, that's where the dude is gonna be. So I'm gonna go to the side area first. Um, assuming this up here is indeed a side area. Yep. Wow! Look at that. That that one hit kill. <laughs> That's what I meant with the difficulty got ramped up. And I didn't even get to use the experience shrine. What was that? He just bashed the air and then I died. Not enough energy. Look at this dude. Wow, that's that's very rude, my man's. Um Yeah, there's a lot more one hit kills now. <laughs> so I may have to do another uh grinding session, maybe. To be fair though, I am playing with like six curses on me. Um Oh yeah, do do tend to the doggos please. Need more energy. Yeah, if you didn't know, a uh, seal energy. has two puppies. Two corgi puppies and he occasionally shows them off on stream if they cooperate. So, if you're into that, definitely go check out Seal. A very, very skilled player as well, like tends to play all games on like the hardest difficulty and then beats them, which just blows my mind. <laughs> um, so yeah. This is like how much I have seven seventy thousand electrum. I might. I think I need a hundred thousand for the first Good then. pack thing. Um, and once I have that, I think I will take the curses off just to make the game not overly punishing. <clears throat> and if I do want more Electrum, I can just grind that off, off stream, I guess. Um... But at some point, I think the curses, because the curses are, are percentile based, right? It's, they, they reduce my resistances by a certain percent and then like, yeah, uh, I have like minus 66% uh, fire resistance. So fire resistance, I assume, is increased by 66% or something like that. I, I don't know exactly how resistance works in this game. But because it's percentile based, the more the the higher I go into the game, um, and the more damage enemies start dealing, the more extra damage I get from my lower resistances. So it just becomes exceedingly difficult. I might keep one curse uh, just to get a little trickle of Electrum, but I'm not gonna run with six. Hail, good hero! Imhotep asked us to watch for you. Just yesterday, this temple stood whole and complete. And now, look, it has been ransacked by a Telkin. <laughs> we did all we could to stop him, but we were powerless against the ancient sorcerer. 
I do not know what he wanted. Uh, there are many mysteries which the Order of Prometheus guards, mysteries from before the War of the Gods and Titans. Imhotep fled when the Telkin came, escaping with some of the temple's most sacred texts. He left me with a message for you. He has gone to Memphis and waits for you there. Follow the Nile and you will come to the great city. Okay. I like how he said those things. It's like, yesterday the temple stood uh, complete and whole. And now, look. <laughs> it's like, look, look here. <laughs> uh, this, this game. This game is a delight. Uh, sorry about that. Uh. But yeah, one thing the curses also do is um, they each curse has a main resistance that it reduces. But it also reduces all other resistances by a little bit. So by having six curses, really, I'm, I'm just like all resistances are impacted. Right, your resistances are decreased, especially against bleeding. But that means like, okay, my bleeding resistance gets increased, uh, decreased by a lot, but all other resistances also get decreased. Right, so I have like bleeding and vitality and uh, piercing and what is this? Lightning, frost and, and, and burning. But my poison resistance and my physical resistance are also decreased because of, of, uh, of the side effects of all of those curses. So running six just makes me extremely fragile. So I might... I might just run one um, after getting that first item pack um, instead of all six just so the game can run or that I can progress a little bit smoother without having to worry too much about constant uh, one hit kills and such. And like, I don't even know exactly what those item packs do. Uh, I guess they're just a bunch of nice items. I don't even know if they're all that great. Um, and they also give you pieces of a secret key, which is necessary for a bonus dungeon that is apparently like a really difficult high level end gamey dungeon, maybe? But yeah, that's not something I need to concern myself with right now. If I want, I can grind for that. Um, but that's not something I need to take care of at this stage. Like in chapter one, the curses weren't that big a problem. What is that? Is that a dark obelisk? Oh, it's a, it's a trap thing. Um, but now in chapter 2, where certain enemies deal quite a bit of damage, I do not want constant one-hit kills. Because they do slow down the game quite a bit. And really, decreased resistances is kind of like what happens in higher difficulties. Right, because this game still runs on the whole normal... They call it normal, heroic, and, and legendary or something difficulty. So I guess you just play through the same thing three times, just with higher difficulties, higher levels and, and such. So there's a lot to this game. Like, I don't know how far I will go into it. I might just beat normal and be like, okay... I've seen the story. Uh, I've I've seen what this game does, and uh, I I know what this game is about. I've shown it to some people. 
I don't know then whether I'll um, continue it privately, but I'll probably not continue Morgan. streaming it after I've beaten normal. Ayo, another level up. I uh, gotta use the experience shrine. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, unless, of course, the other difficulties are actually very different, which I don't believe to be the case. Um, like, this game is built on Diablo 2, and Diablo 2 kind of uh, codified the formula of uh, difficulty levels where you play through the exact same game several times and it's just higher levels and higher damage and, and, and all that good stuff. Um, and and it's only relatively recently where ARPGs began to break from that formula. Uh, Heck, even Path of Exile had that, right? Even that game had the whole three difficulties you play through the game three times kind of deal before they completely revamped the game and um, turned the game from originally three acts. Yes, it, orig it launched with three acts. If I'm not mistaken. Yes, it launched with three acts. Uh, then they added a fourth one at some point. But then, same deal, right? You had the whole... Oh, okay, after that's done, I will play through the exact same four acts again, but on higher difficulty. And then they completely revamped the game and added... Act 5, Act 6, and 7, 8, 9, and 10. They actually added six new acts and made it a single big playthrough. So you no longer play through the same game three times. You just play through one game, and that's a complete story. And, and about the same length, uh, content-wise. And then... Yeah, and then you go into the end game. And I really do like Path of Exile for that. I the more I talk about this, the more I do think that I will stream it uh one day. Uh again, I, I really like the game. It does a lot of things right. And it does a lot of things uh for ARPGs that I enjoy. Um, Not enough energy. Whoops. The biggest thing that that it does right is um, the the chance to really go wild on on builds. Um, I think I've talked about this, but essentially, in in a game like Diablo Two, especially after was it patch one point one. Um, the, the big hell has frozen over patch um, where they completely changed the skill system um, you basically only have a handful of fixed builds that work and everything else is, is just not gonna make it right um, and I didn't enjoy that at all because it was really just Wait, why am I not seeing this potion? Is it? Wow, hold on. Is this for real? Is this potion stuck on another item and therefore it's not showing? Let me see. Yep. 
the potion is glitched out. Now it, it finally landed. Wow. <laughs> okay. Uh, I haven't seen that before. <laughs> that's... I guess that's what happens if you add physics to your loot drops. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> that's... That is so strange. <laughs> Wow, what a, of all the possible glitches, that that is like what ragdoll-ish physics of loot drops getting stuck on each other and then not showing because it hasn't actually landed on the floor yet. <laughs> wow. Okay, that, that's that's a new one. Um, but, but yeah, where was I? Different builds. And that's also something this game does, right? With the whole, um, you get to choose two different, um, two different mastery trees and can combine them. And there's a lot of different skills in each mastery tree. Uh, so you can kind of mix and match to your heart's content and I like that I really like experimenting with builds um, and just doing something new um, and that's one of the big reasons I, I really stopped enjoying Diablo 2 um, because it was basically if I did not play according to a guide on on what builds work uh then then uh i'm i'm gonna be super ineffective and not able to really play the game um it's kind of like i don't know playing a uh Okay, I need to see which path actually leads forward. Uh, playing a, uh, like Magic the Gathering. If you play Magic the Gathering, but uh, you never get to build your own decks. You only ever, hello? You only ever get pre-made decks for you and then, and that's it. That's the only thing you play. And some people enjoy that, sure. Um, but I'm not one of those people. And so I enjoy these games more where you can kind of theory craft a little bit and, and try out different builds. And I think this is the way forward. So let me see if I missed anything back here. Just to make sure. I don't think I did, but I just want to make sure. Um, like right now, I'm running a... What do they call it? Storm? Yeah, Storm and Spirit build. It's like, okay. It's not necessarily a combination that you would expect. Um, but it works, and it's mine, and I built it, and I... I got to decide what kind of a character I wanted to play. Right? And... Right, so that's what this game does, and that's what a game like Path of Exile does, and that's what a game like Diablo 2 doesn't do. Right, it's like... Oh, there's the Frozen Orb Sorceress, or there's the, the Meteor Sorceress, or the Hydra Sorceress, or I, f I forgot exactly what. And there's like Hammer Dean, and, and that's it. Right? So it's, it's basically just... If you play a character, all you're doing is follow this build guide and then just click on monsters, done. Um...
So yeah. Oh hey, another arcade formula, nice. And I enjoy the theory crafting and uh, building like you can't hold anymore. Whoa, what? Like the build crafting exercises to a certain extent. Wow, my inventory is completely full now. Huh. Mm. Okay. Um, but there's a shop dude right down there, so... Uh, let's go. Throw stick of proficiency. I, I love that name, throw stick. Uh. Huh. Not bad. But I like mine more right now. Hmm. Ooh. It's not bad. Um What's this? Nice. It's actually actually that one. Let me keep that for now. Um, poisonous throw stick, numbing throw stick. <laughs> that name will never not be awesome. Okay. This one's nice, but the rings I have right now, I like more. Uh, mo whoa, movement speed, huh? That's interesting. Okay. Thank you. That was very considerate. Like, thank you. Oh, thanks for the redeems again, unborn. All right, hydrate everyone. Oh, and then a big stretch. Ay. Oh. <clears throat> Whew, okay. All right, let's see what this arcade formula does. Uh Physical damage, vitality damage, life leech per second. Okay, that's not really something I need. But not bad to have it. You don't find a lot of arcade formulas in general. Like, there's a lot of the same thing. Like, there's. Um. A lot of different slots to have. A along with, like, all of these charms and, and arcane formulas and all that. So, again, low density of monsters, even lower density of loot. And then an even lower density of stat distribution on loot. Which just means, um... Yeah! <laughs> just in, in general, you just don't find a lot of nice items. <laughs> just, yeah. Alright, let's go, Lich King! Let's let's do some summon Lich King things. Uh, let's let's put this dude here. Okay, let's see. Um, pet 
pets, pets have a mind of their own and will travel and fight with you automatically. However, if you wish to control your pet directly, you can hold down control. Ah, that's easy to remember. Select your pet and then select a target. Pets can be dismissed by right-clicking on their portrait and selecting disband pet. Oh wait, my pet has the same curses? Oh, oh, in that case, yeah, I do want to get rid of them at some point then. I'm at 74,000-ish Electrum. That's not bad. And with more points, the Lich King's just gonna get stronger, so I like that, I like that. Renef, Undying King of Nubia, zombie hero. Yay. Awesome. And the Lich King has quite a few uh, passives to make him stronger, so I like that as well. Nice, this build is coming together. I'm, I'm liking this. Like, all the basic pieces are here, except for a good single target spell. I'll still have to think about that one. Um, Not enough energy. But other than that, this build is starting to... Like, all the basic pieces of this build are coming together. And now it's just making them stronger. How? Nice. Uh, there. Uh, hey, nomadic. Yeah, uh, thanks you for dropping by. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing well. I'm handling the heat a bit better now and uh, sleeping enough. And my Lich King just died. Um, how are you doing? Um. Need more energy. Also, uh, yeah, but yeah, nice, nice to see you again. I hope you are doing well. Ooh, oh, nice. How's that going? I was hold on, so if you if you started streaming uh let me auto knots uh do refresh my memory real quick um I mean, I remember you telling me about the game, but it's been a while. Uh, like, what's what, what was it about? Um, the ah, uh, here we go. Oh yeah, it's nice to see that you have now started your streaming journey. Uh, 
am I going? Going this way. Okay. There. Whoa, these shadows. These these shadows are are interesting. And they're seven pointed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Huh. So they're they're not like they're not even like hexagons or, or octagons. They're, they're seven pointed. That's. Does that mean that this thing? Yeah, this thing is seven pointed then. That's that's fascinating. Okay. Well, I'll have to go check that out then at some point. Do you have a, a schedule? Or is it just uh, trying things out right now? With, with the streaming. Oh man, these flickering shadows are, are something. Trying to now? Uh, okay. That's, that's a good start. Are you liking it so far? That was a bit close. Thanks for getting me out of that scrape. Oh, that, that was simple. Um, and I got a... Huh, that one's not bad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh Feels like I'm playing something while a roommate from college watches. <laughs> yeah, that's that's not a bad way to describe it actually. Um Whoa, shadows. Um yeah, that's that. It, it can have that that feeling, definitely. I don't know exactly what you mean. Um. Yeah, constantly being being observed in your gameplay, <laughs> which which I think is a new feeling. If if you've just been playing games alone, all this time. But yeah, I I I totally understand. <laughs> but I do hope it's also a lot of fun. And that you find um Yeah, that that it's uh, gonna be fun for you to to stream more. Need more energy. Okay, kind of don't know where exactly I'm going. I'm just following the map uh, and not checking if there are any side paths. I believe this is another side area. Like caves like this ah, typically are. Oh, I like rooms filled like this. Diogenes ring. Not enough energy. Ecke homo. Behold a man. What does it do? Diogenes ring. What? 
Oh, okay. Uh, let, let's see if I put this on. Currently, I have 376 intelligence and 1335 energy. My energy actually drops a little bit because this gives me energy, but it gives me like 52 intelligence. Oh, right. Right, yeah, the, the programming. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. Yeah, there's um, there's actually a whole bunch of programming games that I also want to try out. Um, like, uh, I think Scree Screeps is one of them. Uh, I think Exapunks is also one. Oh yeah, Autonauts. Right. Oh, let me let me check that out right now. Autonauts. Oh, it's 50% off right now. Huh. All right, I'll, I'll have a look after the stream. Hmm. Yeah, there's, there's a whole bunch of... Um, programming games there's even an mmo i don't know if it's still active but an mmo that's all about just programming and botting essentially it takes the concept of um programming bots to do things for you and just makes that the core concept of the mmo and so you you program bots to like gather resources for you to fight monsters for you and such and and that's that's it that's that's the mmo which which is an interesting concept um i don't know if it's still active i only heard that someone did that at some point um but yeah there are some more programming games there's even a um a computer or, or like a chip programming and, and wiring game called Shenzhen IO which is really complex because it uh, ah, I died I got distracted <laughs> um, because it it apparently emulates how how you would build actual chips uh computer well not but yeah simple computer chips um and i've i've seen a friend of mine who's also a vtuber i've seen him seen them play it and um <laughs> it it's uh <laughs> I think you really need to get into that and really get into the programming and, and wiring and, and such. Um, it's, it's complex. It's built like a puzzle game, right? So you're given a task of, okay, I need a chip that does this thing. And then you have a couple of pieces to put on the chip and then it's like, okay, use your knowledge of coding to get it to do what you need it to do. Um, and that's it. <laughs> that's all you're getting. Whoa, that's a lot of damage. Oh, it's a boss. That's why. Wow. Um I 
This is kinda making me want to spend points in... Oh. Spend points in, in health, but... Eh. Let me max out my masteries first, because ma maxing these out gives me lots of health anyway. Right? And then I'll see. Uh, but yeah, that might might be something to look into. I mean, I, I own those games. I own Shenzhen IO and I own Exapunks. And I think I own Screeps. Um, because they were in various Humble Bundle deals and such. Um, so I'm probably going to stream them someday. When I eventually get around to it. I have too many games I want to stream. Ah! Ah! Okay. Thank you, Lich. We're taking care of everything. Oof. Um. But yeah, those games are on my very, very long list. Um, to to eventually play on stream. And I've never played any of them before. So. It's probably going to be interesting. But yeah, Screeps is also, if I'm remembering correctly, it's also a game uh, where you program uh, like little creeps essentially to do tasks for you, like gather resources or build things, and you program them Not in JavaScript, I believe. Right, that's where the name comes from. It's like script creeps or something, right? Screeps. Um, which also sounds like an interesting take. Wow, okay, these things deal a lot of damage now. Uh, throw stick of destruction. I, I love the name throw stick. <laughs> It's, it's just so amazing. How big is this place? Oh, hi. Alright. Uh, okay, so I died like three times or so exploring this cave. Not sure if worth. But, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm also planning on streaming like more days per week since like I can theoretically do this full time. Um, so I might as well try see if I can actually handle that. Um, and that also means that I can hopefully get through games faster and get through more games because I want to play through games. I want to finish games on stream and share them with everyone. <laughs> so, but sadly, a lot of the games I play are very long games, <laughs> like RPGs strategy games and such like i've been playing settlers 3 for i don't even know how long <laughs> like months now <laughs> um because there's just so much to that game so i'll i'll have to see but yeah rpgs can easily fill months of, of just game time um, so that's I think that's 
maybe both good and bad. Like, it doesn't allow me to get through games quickly. Uh, but... Uh, it does allow me to, to just share really long games that other people then don't have to play. If, like, <laughs> if that makes any sense. It's like, so you don't have to sit through, I don't know, Not enough energy. a hundred hours of, of a game like Baldur's Gate, if you can watch me do it. <laughs> and I mean, old role-playing games really did sell, did sell, uh, had that as a selling point. That's, that's what I'm looking for. Right, it's like, yeah, if you play the game, you can easily spend like 80 hours, like real life hours just playing this. Or you could spend, I don't know, 200 hours. Like, I think Baldur's Gate was sold with a number like that. It's like, if you do everything and enjoy the full story, you can have like 200 hours of gameplay. It's like, well, is this one game? What? And then modern games nowadays are just like, oh yeah, I'm done after five hours. It does not compare. Um. And the crazy thing no is, room. I've basically played through Baldur's Gate 2. Like, I don't know, three times or something like that. So that's uh, a lot of hours sunken into that game. But worth it is an amazing game. Okay. Uh Let me try and Find a safe-ish spot. Let me just clear everything back here. Oh, oh, that's a hero. Okay. Uh, right. Am I missing anything? No, not really. Okay. And I do want to play those games, like those old role-playing games, um, especially with with like the newer ones coming out, like Baldur's Gate Three coming out, um, and uh, like Fallout New Vegas and Fallout Four and and all that. And like, yeah, but how many people who play these games and love these games, and and they are cool games but how many of them have even heard of Baldur's Gate 1 or even know what Baldur's Gate 1 is or Fallout 1 right or or those other games along that vein is like how many people know them yes. and my guess is probably not a lot because there's a f effectively a generation in between then and now. Um, and then so I just want to bring those games to more people so that more people can appreciate those old masterpieces that led to the sequels today, right? <laughs> um... Like, Baldur's Gate 3 wouldn't be a thing if Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 weren't so massively amazing. Um, and... Right, uh... Right, I'm just checking the stats real quick. I heard Baldur's Gate 1 from release till now and went a lot of change. Uh, so, 
what happened was it got an expansion pack that made that added a lot of extra content um and what happened was um there was a remaster effectively a remaster um yeah um yes there was a um it's called the enhanced edition um hold on let me let me find a stash place etc um so there's this one group of uh people i think they yeah beam dog they um they basically founded the company beam dog beam beam dog wow words and what they Have did was they nothing, basically um remade the games remade a lot of those old games um to to make them run on modern systems what's happening here oh um oh yeah Baldur's gate itself underwent quite a few changes um it had uh yeah it had a big expansion pack and then with Baldur's gate 2 because Baldur's gate 2 had a lot of other um advances why am i keeping this one um so like quality of life things and and rules enhancements and such so those were then also ported back into baldur's gate the first one um that's it we're out of space in the enhanced edition especially Traveler, come look at my wares always welcome um so like you have more character options etc um so that's basically what's happening um and the enhanced editions came out a while ago right they uh they came out before ballers gate 3 was a thing um right some people were just like these these games are amazing but they don't run that well on modern computers anymore because they're really old like they're like 20 years old Baldur's gate one is i think from 99 or 2000 somewhere around there right that that corner um so yeah they don't really run on modern systems anymore and there's a lot of things you could improve like resolution like quality of life you know a, a lot of things um and that's exactly what they did uh there were some things they couldn't improve like they couldn't improve a lot of the graphics for instance um because a lot of stuff is just lost it's it's just gone right the, um all the maps for instance and and by maps i mean like play the the game areas or right? the game is divided into areas uh, that you can travel to on an overland map and uh, every area is essentially a, a hand-drawn background image in an isometric perspective where you then have your your characters and monsters and everything on there and those original images are lost um those those map images background images so those could not be updated um and you it's you basically can't just redraw them because that's a lot of work um so like those things were could not be upgraded but a lot of other technical stuff was um which is pretty cool is this just a dead end so yeah, when I when I do play them, I'll be playing the um 
Is that a shark? Huh. Yeah, it's it's quite sad, but like the the studio that made them no longer exists. Um uh, Black Owl Studios. Ah. Um and yeah, so so things just I don't know, maybe during moves, etc. It's like, oh, we don't need all of these old files anymore. They're just taking up space or nobody wanted to take care of them or nobody knew who had the rights to them, etc. <laughs> right, so spacious and secure. This one's not bad. Good day then. Um, so those are lost. Right. Um But other than that, the game still exists. So Yeah, that's that's what I'll be playing when I play uh, Baldur's Gate and such. I'll be playing the enhanced editions. Um but yeah, still, even though the enhanced editions came out and were, were, were very popular, so popular, in fact, that Beamdog, the company that made them, like, they initially said, we're just gonna make Baldur's Gate. Because it's a really old game and we want to upgrade it. And then we might, maybe, if we have time and resources, might look into some of the other Black Isle games, like, uh... Planescape Torment, Icewind Dale, Baldur's Gate 2, etc, etc. Um, and, like, the Enhanced Edition was so popular um, that they essentially became so big that they were able to do Enhanced Editions of everything, including even newer games like Neverwinter Nights, uh, which is... Which is a 3D game, so that's like, whoa, um, much more modern, much, much newer. Um, and they made an enhanced edition for that as well. And and so on. So that's, that's a lot of old games that have now been polished and can now be played on new systems with, with uh, good technical stability and such. Now Set and Osiris were brothers. Children of Nut and Geb, Sky and Earth. By destiny, Osiris was the first pharaoh, and he ruled over the land with Isis, his queen. He taught us to farm the land, to build and bake, to count and record. But Set was jealous of his brother, and he devised a plan. Set built a beautiful box of cedar and told Osiris that whoever fit inside could have the box. Osiris, trusting his brother, lay down inside. Wicked said, quickly closed the box and nailed it, then threw it in the Nile. But when Isis retrieved the box, Set grew angry. He found it and tore it open and cut his brother into 13 pieces, throwing them into the Nile. Isis again went out. She searched and searched, but found only twelve. She then took wax and with magic formed the thirteenth part. In secret, hidden from Set's eyes, she performed the rites and ceremonies so that Osiris could properly enter the land of the dead, where ever <laughs> since he has reigned. And just like Osiris, you must the gather your party oh, hey. for venturing to forth. All our pharaohs go to death. Hi, uh, Megami Infini. Hi, how are you doing? Thank you for the raid. <laughs> welcome, welcome. It's nice to see you here. <laughs> Hi. Uh, let me let me give you a shout out. Megami Infini. Oh, you're playing Titan Quest as well. Nice, nice. How how was that? How did that go? I just did a speed run of Titan Quest. All acts on normal difficulty took me almost four hours. Wow. Okay. 
That's that's impressive. <laughs> uh, I'm very far. I'm, I'm on my third stream or so on this, and uh, I'm just like kind of sort of halfway through Act Two, <laughs> so I'm I'm nowhere near a speed run. Um, but this is effectively my first time playing the game this far, so uh, yeah. <laughs> Dang, okay, so now I know the game can be beaten in in four hours. Um that's that's good to know, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, it's nice nice to have you here. Uh I'm just kind of taking my time with this one, I guess. Uh this I'm playing was a disaster, but I enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh yeah, I, I can imagine. <laughs> I mean, this game is really wonderful. Uh, and, and it's just, I'm just taking it slow and just... Like, just, and yeah, enjoying it as I go, I guess. Um, and... Yeah, seeing... I'm off to bed now since 3 a.m. Oh! Okay, yeah, then uh, thank you very much for the raid, <laughs> and uh, have a very good rest. It's nice to nice uh, to to see you drop by. <laughs> I don't have time for idle chit chat. Uh, I'm too busy. I suppose you'll come again. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see here. So I found the circle. But yeah, I, I like, again, this this NPC here. Uh, just kind of fully voiced. Again, fully voiced dialogue. Um, and all he does is tell you a bit about history, about Egyptian mythology. Like, this is not necessary in the game. It doesn't do anything. You'll probably never really meet Set or Osiris. You don't need to know about um, Osiris being torn into pieces, etc., etc. But it's in the game anyway, and that's just the the developers caring about the source material, caring about these historical civilizations. And wanting to teach something to the player about them. And that's so cool. Sometimes it is hard to remember the old life. When I do, it is as a sweet dream. That life, the life of a priest, was a good one. Okay. Uh, let's talk to this dude as well. Here's the one. You there. How about the job in the Pharaoh's army? No, of course not. Nobody wants this job, not these days. Yeah. Um. It does. And as I was saying earlier, um. Like a lot of, of these things, cultural practices, uh, religions, society, uh, the environment where this the the people uh, live and such are all intertwined like the whole uh, Mesopotamian gods versus Egyptian gods a lot of that is based simply on how the Nile floods versus how the Tigris and Euphrates flood right and and that shaped the people's view of nature and that in turn shaped their their concept of of the gods which is fascinating to see how everything is connected like this pardon me have you seen a man by the name of unas he is my brother he has vanished and i fear the worst okay i am afraid unas has gone on a foolish dangerous errand According to family legend, somewhere in Giza, a mystical guardian sleeps in a tomb. I fear he has got it into his head to try and find this creature. 
Unas was racked with guilt because he survived the ambush. He felt that it was his fault. <laughs> I, think, I think he felt he could redeem himself by finding a way to avenge his brothers. I fear he wished to use the Guardian against the monsters that took our brothers' lives. <laughs> I mean... I did major in a related subject to history, so... Eh? The story is long. I had three brothers. They were all the family I had. All held important stations in the Pharaoh's army. But one night, when the monsters first attacked, they were ambushed. Unas got away. The others did not. Well, that sucks. Right, Imhotep. Ah, I am relieved to see you. Things have not gone well. Uh, we were horribly unprepared to battle a powerful Telkin. No one has seen one since the war between the Titans and the gods. But now they seem to be everywhere. It is more important than ever that we proceed with the invocation ceremony. Only the gods can protect us. Thank you for retrieving the scroll of invocation. Uh, now, uh, let me see. To complete the ritual of invocation, we must first collect the Eye of Chaos and the Hand of Balance. The Eye is rumored to be somewhere beyond the Fayum Oasis. I believe the Hand of Balance is in Giza. Recover these artifacts and bring them to me. Only then can we summon the gods. Uh, but be on your guard. In these times, peril lurks at every turn. Oh, yeah, I guess Egyptology is, uh, yeah, fair. <clears throat> ah, sorry, I have something stuck in my throat, I think. <clears throat> I am afraid I know no more about the location of these artifacts than I have told you. The Hand of Balance is thought to be somewhere in Giza, perhaps in the Pyramid or the Great Sphinx. The Eye of Chaos should be somewhere near the Fayum Oasis. Seek these artifacts and return to me. Man, this just reminds me of the Hand and Eye of Vecna. Ah, so this is the Gate to Thebes. So Act 2 is a lot more open than than act one act one was very very linear and i mean this is still linear ish ah now i get to pick which one to go to first <laughs> um outer giza right but there's a lot more like just the way the map is constructed it's like okay you you go out here there's two different paths you can follow and then you you return to memphis and then you you go in a third direction and say so this is this is interesting it's not just the same linear uh map build that they had all along. Ah. Okay, nice. All right. Let's see, so Giza is the the hand of balance, the hand of Vecna. <laughs> Yay, level up. But yeah, the eye and hand of Vecna are basically legendary artifacts in Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> legendary both in universe as well as in real life because they've been around for ages uh so a lot of players uh have heard of them at least and 
They are also very infamous because Vecna is... Uh, depending on which setting you go with, he's uh, an evil god of various things, right? The undead or of death or uh, similar related domains. Um, and so, of course, his uh, the artifacts that come from him, his eye and his hand, are also very evil, right? Have a lot of evil energy and uh, are gonna do nasty things to you if you can't control them. And, uh, and the way the eye and hand of Vecna work, as an added bonus of just how creepy they are, is uh, you actually have to replace your eye or your hand with the artifact. So it's not just like a sword or, or an armor that you wear or, or so. No, you actually have to take out your own eye and put in the eye of Vecna or cut off your own hand and, and attach the eye uh, the hand of Vecna. And uh, yeah, so that's and because they are then physically attached to you, uh, they have a much higher chance of corrupting you because of all the evil and, and death connection they have to the god Vecna. Right. And then there's always jokes, is like, oh yeah, the hand of Vecna is Vecna's left hand. Right? And then some people are like, okay, I, I want to use the eye of Vecna and then cut off their right hand. It's like, oh wait. That's that's the wrong one. <laughs> now I have to cut off the other one as well. Hooray! So that's uh, that's a joke that sometimes comes up just just to make it even more messed up. Um. So when I hear like, oh, there's an artifact that's an eye and a hand. It's like, ah, uh, yeah, okay. I see where this is going. Like, my mind immediately makes that connection. <laughs> Alright. Now I'm fighting Zerg. Hooray. Numbing throw sick of finesse. I could totally see a speedrun of this game be a thing, though. Like, um, given how <clears throat> the fights are relatively skill-based, especially boss fights, and how you can cheese some fights, you could potentially just run through a lot of areas be under leveled but if you have a good build like a, a build that allows for for this uh and also like if you understand what kind of loot you you are bound to get right and then just plan accordingly pyramid of khufu huh nice Okay, now this, this area, this area feels like Diablo 2, Act 2. The Desert of Lutko Lane. This, this is a feeling again, and, and Diablo 2 in Act 2 had a very similar area where it's just like a big uh, a big sandy plain and uh, you have to search for a tomb I forgot the the name of the, the dude who's supposed to have built the tomb or whose tomb it was 
uh, Tal Rasha. Yeah, the Tomb of Tal Rasha. There we go. See, I still know things. I've played Diablo 2. Um, Not enough energy. So yeah, that's this. That definitely reminds me of this. That's yeah, it's very, very reminiscent of D two. And I guess if you know where everything is, right? Again, because the maps are handcrafted and not randomized. Everything, like all the locations you have to visit, all the quest givers, and so, are all at the exact same location every single playthrough. Which means you can you can totally plan for that. There's like basically no RNG involved. Look at this. There's a tomb here. There's a tomb here. <coughs> This this is just straight up Diablo 2 looking for Tal Rasha's tomb. And there's like what seven Tal Rasha's tombs and you have to find the correct one. The one that leads to the weird MC Escher Need more energy. place. The place where I definitely could not play the Paladin build I was trying out. Um, like I was trying out a uh, a sacrifice Paladin. So uh, the Paladin in D2 has a skill called Sacrifice, which is a level one skill. Um, and basically what it does is when you use that to attack, uh, um, you drain some of your own health and increase the damage you deal with that attack. And it can make your attack very, very powerful. Um, so it's, it's kind of a risk-reward playstyle. And the way you can counter that is with Life Leech, right? So you make a Life Leech build. Um, so when you attack someone, yes, you drain some of your own health. It, or you pay with some of your own health, but then you just drain it back on the attack. And because you deal a lot of damage and life leech is percentage based, uh, you just drain back a lot of health again. However, life leech doesn't work on every type of enemy. For instance, it doesn't work on things like traps. And Talrasha's tomb. <coughs> um, or at least that, that weird area you have to go to, uh, has a lot of traps. And so it would happen several times that I would attack a trap with sacrifice and kill myself because Not enough energy. Uh, I just drained all of my life. And my friends, when I was playing with them, uh, found it extremely hilarious. When I still remember that paladin's name was Strangey, because uh, I didn't have any other names there. So it's like Strangey was slain by Strangey, and then they were all they would all just have a grand time making fun of me for doing such a stupid build. <laughs> Stay back! Don't go in there. It's gone mad. It won't obey me. Wait, what? I wouldn't go in there. It had sworn allegiance to my family, but now it has turned on us. Don't go in there, I'm telling you. Well, that just means I'm gonna go in there. Um... There is nothing more right here. Okay, so... I'm going to refill my water real quick and go to the bathroom because I've been hydrating a lot. <laughs> so I will um, 
be right back like two minutes see you then Okay. Hold on. <laughs> Thank you for those redeems, Unborn. <clears throat> With my freshly refilled water. Nice. And then a nice stretch. up for the boss fight let's go uh, I don't know what you do but you're dead okay that was relatively easy durable plated braces of trickery huh not something I can use Is there anything else in here? Nope. Okay. It's dead, isn't it? Oh, I had hoped to use it against the monsters. It should have followed my command. It was as if it was possessed. My sister, Tatari, must be worried sick about me. I should return to her. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. I should have told Tatari. 
I should have stayed and protected her. I just thought, I thought, oh, if it had only worked. I have lost so much to the monsters. <laughs> I began to think I was cursed with an ill fate. I should return to my sister. She's the one thing I haven't lost. Okay. Right, so this tomb was side quest. Not bad though. Uh, doing side quests, like completing side quests. Uh, give some nice rewards and give some nice XP boosts, definitely. So, very much worth it. All right. Let's let's just take a look at these pyramids. Ow, 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 ow. Um. So these pyramids are tiny. Oh, hey, it's an obelisk. That's still, still being installed. Sand Wraith. That's interesting. Okay, that's the Sphinx. Still has a nose, but doesn't have her left foot left paw oh hey my my lich king died and there's a tomb underneath that's interesting uh, oh man i just ran away What's that? A bloodthirsty throw stick. A bloodthirsty throw stick. Oh, I love that. It's like, it's a stick that you throw and it thirsts for blood. <laughs> that throw stick. Uh, that's like, that's the best name for a weapon. Sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> but yeah, these pyramids are tiny. Look at that. Also, uh, the isometric perspective really messes with, with the pyramid angles here. Okay, there's one tomb Not there. Like, hold on. I'll, I'll walk along the edges again, and then, like, the isometric perspective of this game. Like, this edge is okay. And then you get to this one. And I think it looks a bit wonky already, but this edge, this edge. Like, look at this. This, this is so weird and then you get to here oh man the, the, this camera with the pyramid shape as they're, they're not friends let's see anything else I missed Right, so if this is not your first time playing this game, you wouldn't know. Oh, there's a shrine of experience. Oh no, it's a frostbite shrine. Okay. You wouldn't know where the thing you're looking for. I think it's the hand of balance. Where it exactly is. Which of these many tombs? 
monsters have broken in here. They must be stopped. If they defy a Pharaoh's sarcophagus, terrible things will happen. Okay. They are witless beasts. They don't know. A curse was cast on the Pharaoh's mummy. Anyone who defiles it will spread a plague through the land. Men and monsters will be afflicted alike. I mean, that sounds like one solution to the problem, really. Somebody has to stop them. If I were any kind of warrior. Ah. <laughs> All right. Let me grab the shrine and then I'll head in there. So I'm guessing the pyramid is not where we find the hand of balance. Because there's a side quest relating to it. Um, so it's possible that this area is only for this side quest, the, the mummy. And then the hand of balance, the main quest, is in some other tomb. But this place looks really cool though. Wait, was that a door up here as well? Ah, these are all doors. Huh. Dang, this place looks cool. as well <laughs> not enough energy <clears throat> this place is pretty like I, I really like the uh, the environmental design in this game okay so it's just this one chamber oh that's interesting So I'm guessing the central chamber is the one with the uh with the pharaoh. So let me see if there's another chamber over on this side. <coughs> yes, there is. And a lot of disgusting maggots. Massive stone door. Not enough energy. Oh wait, this chamber continues. Not huh. enough energy. Now it always feels good to have <clears throat> a friend on your side in games like this. It's like, hey, yes, I have, I have a buddy. I'm not all alone in these monster infested areas. What? What the? Essence of Zeus's Thunderbolt, huh? Oh, haha, so this one is actually <laughs> the sarcophagus. So here's the thing the dude told me not to disturb the sarcophagus. The sarcophagus has not been disturbed yet, and that and yet the game is telling me, yo, open that thing up. So I'll be the one to disturb the mummy. It's like, uh... Yeah, no, the monsters didn't actually do anything. 
I'll be the one to bring a curse upon the entire land. Because that's what I do, apparently. Oh, come on. There you go. Ah, well, you know what? YOLO. That's a lot of powerful staffs. Ha. Huh. Okay. You know what? Uh, where is the quest item? I don't need to carry that one around. I can instead carry something else around. All right. Shop time. The monsters are good for business, yes, but they've also eaten my last two assistants. <laughs> hmm. This one's interesting. I can see the job advert already. Um, market assistant must be willing to be eaten by monsters. Ah, interesting. But not what I'm looking for right now. And strength. Ooh, that's actually a lot of energy. Uh, let me keep these two right now. Bloodthirsty throw stick. Hmm. Applicant must consume lots of spices. <laughs> I mean, only if you want to be nice to the monsters, I guess. Is there a caravan dude in here? Please tell me there's a caravan dude in here. Oh, hey, quest, right? Everything I feared, but thank the gods, Unas is alive. Bless you, stranger, for your help. That guardian was not our only family heirloom. Have this, it may come of use. Hmm. Wow, that's a really bad ring. Thanks, but uh Is there a caravan dude here? Yeah, okay, in the previous section. Here we go. Okay, something more got formed. What do these actually do? What, what are the bonuses? Mm -hmm. 
piercing damage, poison damage, vitality damage. Hmm. Wait. Yeah, choose to eat help. True, true. Might be a, a tactic to consider. Twelve percent chance of hundred percent damage reflected. That is that is crazy, but can only enchant shields. Six percent physical resistance, forty five health, and ninety five health. Wow, that's that's not bad. Twelve percent energy, sixty percent energy regen, and ninety energy. Hmm. That's also good. Mm. What? Minus fifteen percent energy cost. Wow. Okay, that's lightning damage, the health, health regen, and energy. Huh, this one's interesting. Mm. Oh, this is a uh, life leech, nice. There's a lot of interesting ones. Yeah, this is life leech, poison resistance. Okay, like these might be interesting to have and you can you can get the enchantment back off either by destroying the enchantment or by destroying the item not both i'm actually tempted right now to enchant something Like, this ring is freakishly amazing. So I might want to enchant it. Uh, with this to give me even more energy. Hecate's Crescent. Bye. Okay, let me let me just let me try that. So shift right click. No, right click to use. Using relics and charms. Right click a relic or charm or shard to activate it, then left click on the item you wish to attach it to. Combining relics and charms. Create more powerful relics and charms. Combine the shards. Of the same type, relics earn extra additional bonuses when they are completed. Shards of the same type may be attached to items even after the first shard has been applied. Oh, oh, that is cool. Okay, so you don't have to wait. If you already know, I will enchant this item with this type of shard. You can just combine them on the item. That is cool. I like that. It's a very nice quality of life. Right there. Okay. Yes. Wow. Look at that. 
so that's plus 17% energy plus 11% intelligence 60% energy regen and another 90 energy not bad so what's my energy regen right now I believe this is per second that's not bad not bad at all. all right, I'm selling your family heirloom, lady, because it's right, not a very good ring. <laughs> um, okay, there's more stuff here. A lot of sta a lot of mage stuff. Huh. Yeah, let's look at some of this life leech and health eh eh it's really not great health region energy fire resistance i mean this one's not bad but i don't need the health region i need either flat health Oh, you've got to be kidding me. I did not pick up this one. Fine. Uh, either flat health uh, or just more energy. Thank you for the redeem, Unborn. <laughs> wow. All right, I'll do it after uh, because I don't want to waste the, the experience shrine I just picked up. So I'll, I'll just do this one real quick and then I'll get to the redeems. Uh... Like the experience shrine is already halfway done because I messed up. Uh, at least there's another like boss dude here. Nice. Okay, twelve and a half thousand experience. What? Okay. Now that this is done, all right, so stretch. Ah. Hey. Oops, sorry, I bumped the mic. <laughs> and then another hydrate. Oi. I'm actually drinking a lot. Thank you for that. <laughs> uh. Okay. Pharaonic sarcophagus. Huh. Okay. Oh, there is not actually anything here. So do I touch this one as well? Oh no, I've been hit by plague. I like how the, the healing potion... ...and... ...and the poison... Are just fighting each other. To try it. Like like my, my health is constantly moving. Or the number is constantly going up and down very quickly. But the health was staying at the same. Rough, roughly the same level. Right, so that means that the, the healing potion and the, the poison were balancing each other. And look at this. This is cool. This amount of energy regen. Come on. All right. 
Pierce resistance, sleep resistance, skill disruption protection. It's like, oh my god. Hmm. Hmm. You know, mine gives 20 intelligence. I want the intelligence, especially since now with that ring, um, all intelligence gets increased by 11%. So that's, that's nice, you know? So having intelligence just means I get even more intelligence. I will be the smartest person in the entire ancient world. I'll, I'll be like, I don't know, Einstein, the ancient world's Einstein. Yeah, exactly. Stacking indeed. Oh, come on. That's, that's just, like, once you get percentage bonuses like that, you can, you can get some really ridiculous things. I guess that's why so few games use percentage bonuses like this, because, uh, yeah, they can get ridiculous very, very quickly. Oh, hey. There's, there's a portal here, huh? Okay, that's that's cool. Right, is there anything in this pyramid? Doesn't look like it. Ah. Oh, and I can't actually see the center of the big pyramid. Huh, that's that's interesting. Okay, but yeah, like I like I thought um the pyramid dungeon was only for the side quest. So now the Sphinx is where we should find uh, the main quest thing. The uh, the Hand of Balance. Yep, there is a fountain in here. This looks like, why is there a huge dungeon underneath the Sphinx? Like, what? what is this? Uh, Crest of Stability. Twenty-three percent energy leech resistance. Oh my goodness! There is so much going on. So many stats and, and values and resistances and damage types and uh so much happening in this game. And a lot of these appear very, very appear to be very, very um uh words situational very like almost one off I, i've run into what one boss this entire game who uses energy burn um i'm not sure if i've run into any boss this game that uses stun Right, so stun resistance is basically like not having anything at all. If you have stun resistance, but you don't actually meet anyone that stuns, then you don't have any any stat for that because it doesn't do anything. Right, and that's again, it's it's like mechanically. Oh, it's in Assassin's Creed Origins. I mean, I guess it's an interesting place to put a dungeon because everyone knows the Sphinx but it's like oh it's all mysterious you know and and you could totally place a huge dungeon underneath that thing so I guess uh, yeah 
I guess that um, seems plausible in that light. Um, Need more energy. Uh, oops. But yeah, uh, like this this game, it, it, it like pulls you in two directions, or, or or is being pulled in two directions. Effectively, you have a huge amount of mechanical things, right? It, not mechanical depth, but <clears throat> um, breadth. A lot of mechanical breadth. You have like I don't even know how many damage types. Like probably. 20 damage types or something and uh, corresponding resistances you have even more stats like primary stats and derived stats and all of those and then corresponding bonuses for those you have like there's a lot going on the game is very very busy mechanically um but then at the same time because the game is relatively empty right there's not a lot of monsters in this game compared to other arpgs and because it's not procedurally generated everything is hand placed more or less um so the the amount of monsters you see is controlled it's very very controlled um it's, it's like you have a lot of mechanical toys, but the, there's simply not enough content in the game to, to demonstrate all of them. Right? Like, sure, okay, you may have stun resistance in the game, but if you meet zero bosses in the game that you stun, um, then stun existence doesn't exist. Stun resistance doesn't exist in the game. Simple as that. Um, and and it really does feel like this game is trying to uh, to stretch itself across both of these uh, design decisions. Right, extreme mechanical breadth but very low density in in content where this breadth could appear um and like i said before and it's not just monsters that do this it's also items right it's like if you never ever get any item that that gives you a certain type of resistance well okay having that stat in the game is basically just yeah the player just has to kind of deal with it you know um so and that's that's i think I think that's that's owing to um, the relative novelty of ARPGs, right? Um, like Diablo 2 was basically the first ARPG, not Diablo 1. Diablo 1 is not an ARPG. Diablo 1 is a horror game um, and, and plays completely differently from Diablo 2. But Diablo 2 is the first real uh, loot, like loot based ARPG in that sense. And because it is the first, the genre hasn't really been codified fully and hasn't been explored fully and hasn't been like there there are no no best practices not a lot of experience yet and uh a lot of games did many things right but at the same time you can see how how they're still kind of experimenting with 
with various design choices. Oh wow. What is this? Hello. You're scary. Oh, and you cannot be stunned. Hello. Need more energy. Um I mean, it's easy to to have today's perspective and be like, "Ah, oh, man, ARPGs need to be like this," and and designers of ARPGs nowadays do this. It's like, yeah, but but we're twenty years in the future, <laughs> right? <laughs> of course, we we basically have hindsight, right? Um. So we we have more or less 20 years of of design experience in the ARPG space to to know what works and what doesn't and what to watch out for. Um So for its time, this game is is brilliant and it still holds up today and still being updated today and it's still a lot of fun today but you can see you can <laughs> tough crowd that, that's the achievement nice um you, you can kind of see some you can't hold anymore some experimentation is full. going on that that isn't quite up to modern standards after 15 20 years of of better understanding of the ARPG formula uh, and I think I leveled up and haven't spent anything yet Okay, so I I want to put a one point in here. I do want to get all of these uh, bonuses, right? So I do want to raise this mastery. Plus, raising the mastery here gives me more stats, which is always a good thing. Yes. All right. Uh. Oh, this one's much better. Plus gold damage, plus frostborn damage, cold damage, and energy regen. And plus one skills to store mastery. That, yeah. Heck yeah. With that, I don't need this one anymore. Okay, let's see. Nope. Nope. Um, nope. Nope. Uh, no. This is not bad. Oops. I just said it's not bad, and I accidentally sell it. Um, mm -hmm. um, this is flat health. I'll take this. Yep. Okay. Come again. Go to the caravan. Good day. Also, what do I do with this? I don't know what I do with that actually. are safe with me like what do i do with the staff of of khufu 
Khufu's curse. Do I just carry this thing around all the time now? It says quest item. But like what what do I do? Do I have it in somewhere? I can hold that for you. I can just store it in my stash. <laughs> huh. Good day then. Yes, good day. Huh. Okay. <laughs> I, I I don't know. Um uh, right. Do, do, do. It's a lot of stuff here. Nice. And and of balance. Okay. I think I'm done with this area. So uh, let's just head back. Let me just check. Is there any? I don't think there's anything left up there. Um, but I'm just gonna check in case I, um, I'm missing something. Nope. Okay, done with the Giza area. That was that was quick. I can go back to Memphis. Okay, sell some more stuff because that's always nice. What you see is all I have. Oh, that's okay. Burning throw stick of proficiency. All right, I didn't sell any green stuff, right? Yeah. Come again. Um. Can I hand this in? <laughs> Excellent. Now bring me the other artifact and we can begin the invocation ceremony. Ah, uh, that's clever. They, um... So it doesn't matter which one you get first, they can use that dialogue both times. Uh, in, uh, in any case, they can use that dialogue because he just says the other artifact. It's so strange to me that you can just store quest items like this. Like, this is... Your goods are safe with me. Like, I'm not used to being able to remove quest items from your inventory. It's just so... So alien. Like, what is this? All right. Let's see. Ooh, an oven. That's cool. Okay, whenever I see those torches then that means or braziers, that means that's where the error the, the the quest should continue, which means everything else here is a side area where I can just get a bit more XP. We're actually making good progress. That's huh. Desert waste. That's that's a nice name. All right. 
I'm supposed to find the eye of... Oh, it's near some oasis, right. The eye of chaos. <laughs> okay. Let's see. I think I'm at maximum bolts for my frost thing, right? Let me just check real quick. Yeah. Yeah. I'm um, five is the maximum. Okay. I could put points into here to um Increase the damage. I don't need to right now. Um, I'd rather get my, my Lich King higher. Like my, my Frost Shark deals so much damage right now. I don't need to buff it even further. And the thing is, if I buff it further, it just costs more to cast. So... Oh, <laughs> this tiny little hill blocked all of my frost shards. Yeesh. Okay, there was that one cave over there. Alright, let's explore the cave. Um, Cause I feel like getting my Lich King more powerful right now. Like I'm I'm basically one shotting everything anyway. Right? Um so putting even more power into my frost shard is just gonna be overkill. Um for no added bonus. But getting my Lich King more powerful is going to have much more effect right now. So. So yeah, that's, that's the plan right now. Oh. Oh, oh, they turn into another t kind of undead then. Oh, okay. Ah. Like a, a vengeful spirit kind of deal. That's interesting. Also, I feel like Mansa Musa running around this area with like almost two and a half million gold. <laughs> it's like if I donate a lot, I could single-handedly crash the gold price in the region. Just like Mansa Musa did. Let's see. Like hopefully at some point my my lich can um also one shot normal enemies which would be extremely cool and i mean like what it goes up to level 16 right the lich king goes up to level 16 and i'm at seven so i'm not quite halfway there yet and he's already doing pretty well so that's that's pretty cool. So I'm an outsider. Uh, 
Ah, okay, so this is a, a short... So this is a permanent summon until the dude dies, and this is like a uh, short-term one. Ooh. Oh, this is cool. Nice, a death ward. So it's just like if my health drops too low, I just heal. It has a five minute recharge time, but you know, it's, it's like, it's, it's good to have it. <laughs> Oh, hey, it's a boss. Ow. Hey! Who's doing this? Okay. Ooh. Did I murder the boss? I think so. Another side dungeon, yay! Awesome. All right, let's continue exploring. Man, I love the ice shard, it's so cool. There's also a bunch of other stuff in this game where I'm not sure exactly how the game functions. It's like, if I drink a health potion through my quick, like through a hotkey. Health potion, health potion, lesser health potion, which one is consumed? Okay, it's the lowest level one. So essentially, if I want to have like hotkey higher health potions I need to get rid of all of my lower ones first <coughs> um, such as by selling them or using them okay it's kind of what I figured was happening but it's nice to have confirmation Which is also, like, if you have lesser ones, they don't heal as much, so if you drink them, it might not be enough for the damage you are taking. So you do want to upgrade your potions as well, which is, like, huh. Interesting concept. I mean, yes, you want to upgrade your potions, but you want to... I completely eliminate the lower ones because the hotkey just auto picks the lowest level potion you have which might not be ideal <laughs> there's another fountain very nice Sobek Plateau. Right, lots of scarabs or beetle things. Ah, that fence, too powerful. It's 
blocks everything. Exactly. Like my health regen is really low right now. Um but that's okay. I have like a hundred and eighty health potions. So I can afford to use them. Should be getting closer to the end of this part as well to get to the final Eye of Chaos dungeon thing, wherever it is. This is pretty though, like and and it looks different, right? It looks and feels different from the other desert area, right? The Giza area, which which is nice. Like they're both just desert, but the look and feel are different, and that's that's really cool that they pulled that off. Uh, oh hey boss, yay! My lich is, is gone. Majestic chest. That's cool. Whoa, what is going on? Hello? Oh, Sand Queen Masika, this is like some some sort of boss. Wow, the damage. Yeah, and because potions are on a cooldown, if you drink a lesser potion and it doesn't heal enough, you might just die before you can drink another potion. Oof. Out there, out there on the dunes, that's another achievement, huh? But I didn't actually die. Nice. What? Okay. Again, I don't know what rarities are. Like what is, I mean, yellow is, is normal magic, but what is green? What is like, light green apparently what is blue i don't know i'm guessing blue is really good but i'm not sure um so i'll have to look that up again this was from a time before uh item rarity colors were codified Nowadays, item rarity colors are all codified, right? You have white as as normal, and then uh, typically um, blue for magic, uh, yellow 
or so something yellowish for for rare um or maybe purple right and then orange or red for for like legendary unique etc something along those lines right and here it's it's just completely different um so i cannot use my gamer instincts to help me there like everything other games have taught me like i i cannot use Not all of energy. the knowledge here because this game is too old <laughs> you can't hold anymore okay can I Tetris my way around? Probably not. Oh no, I can. Aha. Yes, sure. Uh, Memphis. Let's go. Making good progress, though. Oh, I'm almost at a hundred thousand electrum. Nice. Greetings. Yeah, get rid of that. Get rid of this. Hmm. Actually, let me check again. What exactly does defensive ability do? Dodge melee attacks and avoid critical hits. No, then health is better. Because I'm not going to be in melee a lot. So I don't actually need defensive ability all that much. Okay, blue seems to be quite special, like almost unique. There's also special art for them, so I'm guessing these are basically unique ones. And then green would be rare. Something like that. Hmm. Let's see. Another percent strength and percent health. This is dang this and that ring. That's uh wow. Mm. Ooh. I don't know if my Lich deals elemental damage. I don't think so. But this one's nice. This one has the pet bonus and another bonus. All right. God's protect you. Storage for the burden traveler. Okay, 
son source. That's okay. Uh... Oh, three of these hack skins. Nice. Oh, the relic vault also gets increased if I if I increase the size of this. Ha! Huh, that's that's interesting. Okay. Not that I You're really good, need a larger relic me. vault right now, but I guess that's nice. The monsters are good for business, yes, but they've also eaten my last two assistants. <laughs> the way you just like very nonchalantly say, yeah, 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 they've, they've been eaten. Yes. Bye then. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Bang. Oh wow, one enemy got hit by two shards? That's cool, I did not know that was possible. Hey, why are there monkey noises? exploring the circuit though du, du, du. <laughs> that was the last one alive over here Let's check out this cave. Big maggot and big scorpion. that I know I have so many health potions and that I can be much more liberal with them with their with their use uh, it really feels like I don't need to worry about max health as much um, 
and can focus more energy uh, <laughs> in energy I'm like focus more on my build in energy nice almost another level up I'm getting there I like how boss monsters just give such a huge boost. It's like such a huge amount of XP, just a one drop. That's really cool. All right. That was a simple one, but okay. I'll take it. There was a boss monster in here or some nice loot in here. Is there a cave up here? I don't think so. Just to make sure though. No. Okay. Fountain, braziers, this is the way forward. This is pretty far actually like compared to the, the Giza area Giza was basically right there right on the doorstep of Memphis and this is like ha huh. quite quite far like look at this it's like this is Memphis and then Giza is like boom right here and now this I'm I've I've walked quite a bit and I don't even know if I'm close yet or not so the eye is definitely more, uh, not more difficult, but more, uh, strenuous to find. Ooh, this is, this is interesting. Is this like an old river? An old river bed or something? Or a path? Or tracks? Huh. Essence of Heracles might. Oof. <laughs> also, there's these things just randomly sticking out all over the place. Are these like Tartarus anchors or something that are bursting through? It'd be like. Yeah, now the titans can come through. Are these like corrupting stones or, or so? I have no idea. It's very intriguing and I don't know if the game ever solves that. If they ever tell you what those things are. I just see them everywhere. Like not just here in Egypt, but they were also in, in Greece as well. And I wouldn't be surprised if they were in... in uh, other areas. Nice. Okay. Uh, oh wait, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> I was stuck there for a second. Okay, this area is big now. I've traveled quite a bit and now this is a whoops this is a big area. Eesh. All right. Not enough energy.
Nice. Cleansing plated breastplate. Ah, <laughs> oh, you just gotta love randomly generated names like that. Yes, this is a plated breastplate. Oh, oh, I, I thought it was not gonna be plated, but still a breastplate. <laughs> oh man. What, what would an unplated breastplate be? <laughs> Just like a breast? I don't know. <laughs> uh... This, this raises many, many questions. Oh, is that a boss? Yeah. Or kinda. Again, I don't know exactly how how monster tiers are differentiated. Because, again, they use very different coloring for their names. Sure, you have white for your normal monsters, but then you have a whole bunch of different colors, name colors, for different kinds of boss monsters. Not enough energy. And, um, and it's not the same coloring scheme as for items. It's a new coloring scheme. So again, that is yet more information, like yet another method of categorization that you have to learn, which, you know, seems a bit excessive, maybe. Like there's, there's the white for normal, and then there's this purple or violet for I don't know what, and then there's those with a star above their head, and then there's I saw a red name at some point. It's like what is going on? What what are these name colors? Ah, there's the oasis thing. There's a lot of dungeons here. Oh my goodness. They're just called Fayum Passage. All right. Du -du -du -du. Hello? Okay. Oh, there's a rebirth fountain in here. That seems like this is a place to to continue? Also, it's passage, not just cave, so I am wondering. This one's even better. Oh my goodness. Wow, I I did not think I would find another one. <laughs> um dang. Instead of eleven and five percent, it's twelve and six percent. Um You know, given large enough numbers, that is a good deal better. All right, let's check out this oasis, Fayum Oasis. Good to meet you. I'm glad to see a new face. Well, I'm glad you're glad. Once there were two lands: the kingdom of the Upper Nile and the kingdom of the Lower. It was at this time that Horus ruled the Upper Egypt, and the wicked Set ruled along the Lower Nile. When they made war and fought, Set gouged Horus in the eye, and Horus cut off half Set's virility. <laughs> Horus emerged victorious, and he was called 
Horus the Great, Set was exiled to the desert. The desert was dry and infertile because of Set's wound. And still, the light of the moon, which is Horus's left eye, is pale compared to the light of the sun, which is his right. Ooh. That is cool. Right, that is using yeah that is actually explaining the world around you using religion that, that is cool isnu the doom raider chieftain defeated if it's true that's the first good news i've heard in days we'll send an envoy to memphis we'll have trade again by the next moon oh it seems like i just randomly completed a side quest just by exploring around. Weapons, armor, potions, bones, okay. and staves. What would be your choosing? Another skill bonus thing. Some of these are starting to become really nice. Okay. Yeah, okay, I'm kind of pissed. Well, not pissed, but like... I found this ring. This is really amazing. And then I find basically the same ring, except it's like... Just slightly better. I'm like, oh man, I already enchanted this one. What do? What happens if I equip this one? What happens to my stats? Energy goes down slightly, but intelligence goes up by quite a bit. So what I could do... Is I could put another enchantment on this one. And wear two Diogenes rings? Farewell. That seems like cheating. Greetings, traveler! We haven't seen many new faces here lately. I don't know about any ancient artifacts. The only ancient thing around here is the desert. There's the Temple of Osiris, just outside the walls here. Be warned, it was attacked last night by monsters. No, now hold a minute. I have heard of another temple, ancient from the days of the first pharaohs. It was built into a cliff far off in the desert. But it is only a legend. No one has seen it. It might not exist. <coughs> okay. That was, uh, not necessarily useful. You killed the cursed Dune Raiders, did you? I would have paid you handsomely. Only now, I've got nothing. I hope you helped yourself to what was left of the caravan. Um. Okay, this, this game seems to be a bit unable ish well i i don't know i i kind of sequence broke the game um a little bit so uh 
Where was this was the passage? Let me see which what this is. Like I finished the quest before before it's accepting it. Uh So I don't know why that quest icon stayed over that dude's head. Um Seems a bit unnecessary. And I don't know, I don't think I missed out on any rewards by finishing the quest before accepting it. That, that would be really stupid if that were the case. Like I get punished for exploring, essentially. Um... But I don't think that's the case. Hmm. Another very simple cave. This this cave is kind of built a bit like a bug. The shape of the cave ish. Right? It's like we have the head or so, and then and then four four legs. Oh hey, it's continuous. What is this? More sand swept cave. Oh, they can fly over my projectiles. Um, nope, that was not what I wanted to do. This is what I wanted to do. This is, this is big. Did I just accidentally stumble upon like a correct cave where I'm supposed to go and like quests? But there's no fountains in here, so I don't believe so. Yeah, it just looks like nice loot and, and lots of monsters in here. At least so far it does. But this cave just keeps going. Wow. Deeper and deeper and deeper. Let's see where this leads us. At least there's a lot of like nice chests, like royal coffers and such, like the, the ones with with a lot of loot. Also, like this this poisonous-ish water dripping down. Nice little effects. Wow, again, just keeps going. This is really far. Uh. Yeah. yeah, 
was, huh? What is this? Should I be concerned? Like, I'm really deep in this. I'm fascinated by this. This is just like let's just make a really 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 long cave. And I have no idea where this leads. I have no idea what I'm going to find here. There's going to be a boss at the end. If there's going to be an exit that leads me somewhere else. I'm seeing big piles of bones now. Like these big, big bones. That leads me to believe there's probably some really nasty thing down here that murdered those big creatures. Or so. Um, and that does not fill me with any... Uh, relief. That, uh, on the contrary, it fills me with quite a bit of dread. Majestic chest. Nice. So far, it's just kind of normal mobs. Hmm. Yeah, this is this is big. But no boss or anything. Should I be concerned? Huh. Also, these big bones are. Um... Whoa. are making me feel a bit uneasy. Like, why are there dead things down here that are this big? What murdered them? No okay. You can't hold anymore. Right. Let's just eh, uh, get out real quick. Oh, hi. Yeah, no problem. Welcome back. What do you want? What is your name? What is your favorite color? What is your quest? Uh, I 
I think. So Lancelot of Galahad. <laughs> Is it? Wait, isn't Galahad another knight? So, so Lancelot of Camelot or so? I don't know. Yes, you seek the Holy Grail. speed of an unladen swallow. Um. It's not bad. All right then. Caravan! <laughs> exactly. I don't know. <laughs> oh man. Uh right. I wanna wear this one. Relic Vault. Alright, let's see if we have something nice to enchant this with. Um, minus 15% energy cost is not bad. But I'm also liking this one. Physical resistance, 45 health, and another 95 health. It's a lot of health. <laughs> nah, it's like, I don't really remember what they said as well. Like, it's just... I just remember the questions, so... <laughs> because they're so ridiculous. <sighs> Alright, there's also this one. You know what? Why not? Why not use them? Bye. Oh, well, it's like boom. There we go. Look at that. Oh, hey. Look at this, look at this. I put one point into intelligence and I gain five points. Then I put another one in here and I gain another five points. Unless it actually gives me five points. Nope. It gives me four. Every point gives me four, I think. And then I get another one because of all the bonuses that I get. Like the... Yeah, makes sense. It's 12% here, 11% here. That's rounds to the 20%. So that's that's another... Or 23%. So that, that rounds to one more. Yeah. Awesome. Um, right. I want one point in here. Two points in here. Yes. The, the the percent bonuses man i don't know if the 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 designers thought it through it's like percent bonuses yeah sure what can go wrong with percent bonuses um and then you start stacking them uh actually i want to put one more item away first and then i think i'll take another short break our chests are spacious and secure OK. 
Your goods are safe with me. All right. Then. Okay, I will take another short break. Um. Oh, and I'm at a hundred thousand. Yeah, so I'll do the uh, the pack thing for the hundred thousand electrum and then remove some of the curses to make the game a little smoother but yeah i will be back in a little bit uh, i need to go to the bathroom again maybe get a snack or so so i'll be back in a couple minutes see you then Okay, I'm back. I have some cookies here with me now. To uh, recharge a bit of energy. Hooray. This is the final room of this cave, and I believe there might be a big boss waiting in the center. Also, I like how you can see that this is like a big single uh, entity, like a big piece of decoration, and just kind of placed it into the wall. Um, and then the other part just kind of clips through. But you can still see it because of the way <laughs> the camera works. So <laughs> it's... I don't know, I just find that pretty funny. Um, 
all right i wanted to do the the temple thing i will i will do whatever is here first i'll finish this this cave because then i can uh just uh portal out of here and not have to worry about coming back to this portal and such so let's see what's what's here yes it's big boss with an orange name and i murdered him okay That was that was kind of anticlimactic. I'm not gonna lie. But uh okay. Right. So now I can go back all the way back to Greece to that uh special temple. Mm. How do I get there? Oh, this way. So yeah, this is the temple that appears in the opening cinematic, which is pretty cool. And if you come in here. Um, all right, you can access your stash. <laughs> in any case uh i can buy this thing now i don't know what it does huh so i am starting to think that um blue items are indeed uh, unique. And I got a bow. And an axe. Hooray! <laughs> Yay! Um... Yeah. I wonder. No, not worth it. I'm losing. I'm gonna lose too much. Actually, yeah, let me wear these. Okay. And then, uh, where is the cleansing thing? Cleansing. And just like that, I don't have any more curses. Well, like I said, I think I'll go with one. Uh, fragile vitality sounds like doable. And uh, Curse of the Arrow. Yeah, sure. Let's go with these two. Um, so I get a small trickle of Electrum. Um, cause why not? Okay, and then I can go to... Oh, wait. Memphis again to uh, sell and store my stuff. Mm, I don't have to. I just go here. 
and be right there where I need to be. What pleases the noble traveler? Okay. Safe travels. Oh, there's another quest to go. Once I went into the desert, I wandered far, far into the desert. Suddenly, there were stairs in the sand. I went down, and there were chests and chests of treasure. I couldn't believe my eyes. I reached for the treasure, and suddenly beasts charged at me from the shadows. I got out of there and fast. <laughs> I'd take my hide over some gold and jewels any day. Okay. So that's basically just saying, yo, there's a cave with treasure, and if you find it, we'll reward you even more, because sure. Ah, I'm trapped. Oh no. I'm halfway to the next level again. This is going quick. Okay, how's... Yeah, the, the Electrum... I mean, it's not as quick as I had before. But it's still a small trickle. No, I gained like 72 or so. Um, just then, that's that's not bad and over the course of the game. Like I said, if I need to, I can find a good place, load up on a couple of curses and then grind. I do feel the need. But it does feel a lot, a lot less punishing. Like I was actually playing the game on pretty hard mode because I had six out of eight curses on me. Um, now having only two is like, oh, this this game is feels simpler in a way Doo -doo. but I can also see that uh, the curse like the curses are kind of balanced which means the um, the amount by which your uh, Resistances get reduced varies depending on which one you choose. So like the arrow the pierce damage one was 15% I think Or even less But the vitality one was 20 Simply because you uh, you will encounter a lot more piercing damage than you will vitality damage and I think that's clever Oh, that was it? Okay. Yay. So it really is like, yo, do what you normally do. Just like explore and uh, find loot and we will reward you additionally to do that. Which is very kind of the game. But the dude did say, so this is like, he did say, oh, I wandered far, far, far out into the desert. It's like, yeah, that's, that's not really far. So like distances and such are truncated. But 
but okay. Mm. Let's see what's in this corner back here. It might be nothing. It might be where it continues. It's where it continues. Okay, so let's finish this area first. <laughs> this area is pretty big. Also, oh, lots of ruins now that I look at it. <laughs> there may be more caves. I don't know. I'm kind of feeling like cave delving. Caves are nice because they're relatively linear, not super open where you like have to run around and backtrack and such. It's you know, there. Ooh, Skyfire Pendant. Hmm. So this is the lightning one, okay. And what is this? A temple. Or, like, a former temple thing. <clears throat> You're the one from Greece, aren't you? The one who killed the Telkin. Would you believe it? A Telkin was here. A Telkin did this. Just <laughs> yesterday, these pillars were standing and whole. I have guarded this Promethean temple from thieves and desert beasts. But I was powerless against the Telkin. In truth, I was lucky to escape alive. Hmm. I have not heard of this Eye of Chaos. You might try asking around in Fayum. Okay, so there's this Telkin who's like one day ahead of me. Essentially. Feels bad, man. Okay, let me finish exploring the desert and then I will go through that that long passage The Fayum passage where I don't know wh where it leads I think if you speed run this, now that the thought is in my head, <laughs> you might also. I don't know if you would pick and choose like specific side quests that are very quick to do, but give you a huge amount of um, XP, um, just so that you can, like. Keep up and do do the game easier like because I can imagine that you're gonna run through a lot of areas and be very under leveled in general so picking critical side quests that don't take very long to finish or that you can basically finish on the way um, and then like um, getting the XP from them just to to make up for all the XP you didn't get from running through the game right it's it sounds like something that a speedrun strat could be right if you because if you look at certain speedrunning things uh, speedruns like they they sometimes do weird things. Are you kidding me? For real? 
Wow, okay. So that's where the passage leads. Oh, hi. <clears throat> it's like they sometimes do things that don't progress the game directly, but then if you pull them off, you you manage to skip ahead and and trying that thing and succeeding will save you much more time than just playing the game normally. Um, huh, okay, well at least now I know. So let me uh, sell my stuff real quick. What pleases the noble traveler? And then, uh... <laughs> and we can continue. Okay. All right. Well, at least we uh, explored everything. So again, if you know this, you can just use that to your advantage, right? Also, the whole item drop system is like when you open a chest, it takes a moment before the items actually land on the floor. And before you can see what it is and, and pick them up. And that's just... Eh, that just costs additional seconds. Ooh. Oh, big dude. Maybe I can just kite him around and let my Lich King take care of him. Hey, it actually worked! <laughs> No more sequels. I don't know why it's called that. I just got the achievement. Majestic chest. Huh. Probably a drop RNG manipulation trick. You know, there might actually be. I can totally imagine there being something like that. Um, now that you mention it. Um... I'm thinking back to like <clears throat> um, Diablo 2 runs. I don't know if they have such a system. <clears throat> but I can I can imagine there being such a thing or I can imagine that, that something like that might be possible. Okay, sell stuff, By store stuff. Now, I won't get more till next week. That sounds like a threat. 
What? Wow. Oh, okay. These are really good. And, um... These are, this is actually better, okay. Bye then. <laughs> also, I need to grab the, the other quest items. Okay. Store this, store this, store this. Then you store it here. And then relic vault. Uh, why not? Safe travels. <laughs> okay. Here's the one. Ah, you no, wrong, dude. Where, where are you, dude? Here, dude. The eye of chaos and the hand of balance. They combine to form the scepter of eternity, an artifact of great power. Now, let us make haste and perform the ceremony. Oh, that doesn't look good. Why, this, this cannot be. How could we fail? All that we tried to accomplish has been in vain. It is clear to me that the gods cannot help us. We are now truly on our own. Mm -hmm. ha, we must never stop trying. The Telkin that has been rampaging through Egypt has ravaged a number of sites guarded by the Order of Prometheus. These sites hold powerful artifacts from the ancient war. Clearly the Telkin is looking for something. Uh, because of the artifacts' mysterious powers, we of the Order have guarded the hidden sites for thousands of years. Uh, now there is only one site that has gone untouched in all of Egypt. Uh, in my blindness, I ignored all this because I thought the gods would save us. I was truly a fool. You must go to the tomb of Ramses, the last site in the Valley of the Kings. Head up the Nile to Thebes, and from there to the valley and the tomb. Look for signs of the Telkin's passage. <laughs> Whatever he's searching for must not fall into his hands. When you have accomplished this task, meet me in Thebes. Now that we cannot count on the gods to save humanity, we must count on our heroes. Go now! Okay. But I just gained two attribute points. Yay. Oh, hey. I am Zazamak, the high priest of Memphis. Second in power to Pharaoh himself. The truth is, times are difficult. You see, what with the monsters and Pharaoh in hiding, many are beginning to doubt the priest's power. If our authority is not respected, there is no order. If there is no order, people will panic. There will be chaos and the monsters will take the city. Everything ruined. We have magic, but not enough to stop the monsters. Without authority, Memphis is lost. Egypt is lost. That's very dramatic. Some troublemakers have started demanding that we show the power they believe we have. If you care to help, there is a staff of legendary power. I would pay dearly for it. With it, we could preserve order in Memphis. We could lead. We'd have a chance. See? Is this the, the Khufu staff? Can I believe my eyes? Uh -huh. Is that the staff of Khufu? Osiris, strike your enemies. I must reward you handsomely for this. Here. <laughs> okay. 
So I just talked to this dude a couple of times and then he recognizes. I'm like, here, here, I have the staff. I have the staff. I was like, oh, we must show magic. We must have preserve authority. I was like, and then after a long talk, he's finally like, hold on. Do you have the staff? <laughs> oh, man. Greetings. But I was wondering what that staff was for. Uh... What did I just merge? This thing. Whoa! Whoa! Plus 10% health, plus 10% energy? That's like Bye. 178 energy for me. That's not bad. All of these, man, there's so many percentage bonuses in this game. It's so strange that there's so many percentage bonuses. It's like, do these people know math? Or did they design the game that you must use percentage bonuses, otherwise you're just underpowered? Which which is strange. <laughs> which is a strange way to go. I look at this, the riverside and, and then the fields here. This looks so good. Look at this game. It's so pretty. Man. I... Ah! You could totally imagine yourself just walking through these fields. Maybe not with the monsters, but you know, like, eh. It's so pretty. Okay. Upper Nile. That means we're actually moving south. Yes, because the Upper Nile is south of the Lower Nile. Because <laughs> Upper here refers to... Like... Closer toward the source. don't want to rush through the game especially not on my first playthrough simply because you know everything here is handcrafted the entire map is handcrafted and it's a very pretty map so I kind of do want to look at what these people have made That's a shrine of experience, yes. Oh. Ah. Use the shrine of experience. to fight I want to use the experience shrine as much as I can uh, 
Okay, that, that wasn't bad. All right, now to pick up all the loot. Right, and, and I just realized because everything is his hand placed and never changes, you also know exactly where shrines of experience are. Right? So you might also tactically use those and it's like, okay, pick up this shrine of experience and then you know this area will have a high concentration of monsters. So I will just spend a minute farming here with my shrine of, uh, with my experience shrine bonus and that will allow me to uh, keep up in terms of leveling to a certain degree at least Eesh. Those things are pretty annoying. They take a lot of hits and then they have the whole slow poison going on. Ow. Ow. Was that it? Okay, looks like that was it. Well, not much to this cave then. Oh well. Now I kind of want a more traditional RPG with this art style and this this ambience this atmosphere you know you're you're sitting there you can hear like the birds chirping and such it is so nice it's really nice Late and good later, you have a great night. Oh, yeah, thank you for being here. Um, and, and hanging out for so long. Have a great night, Unborn. <laughs> thank you for that. Redeem, I shall stretch. Ah. Well, I don't think I'll continue for too much longer as well. It is... 6 a.m. Ugh. Oh my goodness. Wow, you're using all of the points for those. You're being too kind to me, Unborn. <laughs> Have a great night. And thank you so much for hanging out here. And I will indeed drink as well. see how long have I been going I might go for like another I don't know 10 minutes or so 15 minutes it is 6 a.m. or getting close to 6 a.m. Um, so I might see um until I get to the next like major checkpoint like a fountain or something. Ooh. More mummy dogs. Yes, try enough experience, please.
I might actually level up from all this. Let's see. I'm very, very close to leveling up. I think I'll at least make it to the next level. Um... Yeah, let's 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 do that. I'll play until I hit the next level, and then I will uh, find the next fountain, and then I think I'll call the stream. <laughs> Need more energy. And seeing as how I'm going to level up very soon. It's probably even gonna be just the very next fountain I find. Well, that does seem like a good cutoff point. I actually managed to make quite good progress. Uh, I think we're like halfway through chapter two um like we did the whole find the two MacGuffins, and then oh no the quest like it, it actually failed now we must find another MacGuffin or, or something <laughs> oh no <laughs> I think I am. Am I gonna level up in this in this dungeon? That'd be pretty cool. I don't think so. I don't think there are enough monsters left. Oh no! Ta-da! Okay, so the next fountain that I find will be the checkpoint where I'm gonna call it. 500 intelligence that's that's amazing ding okay next tier unlocked awesome so uh spectral bolt soul blight ah oh, so this just gives the lich king more more abilities to use okay This is wine skin. Okay. All right. What's up here? Durable plated breastplate. <laughs> Again, it's just like plated breastplate. As opposed to what? I pick up everything I left here because of the experience shrine. And then do, 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 do. Okay, I do think the next fountain shouldn't be too far off. Um maybe. Okay, this is probably another big camp area. Yeah. dungeon wow
This continues. I'm bound to get another level before I find the next fountain. Uh -huh. I do want to finish all the side areas before though. So that I don't have to backtrack when I continue this game the next time. Okay, I'm liking how my Lich King is actually doing work. Okay, so nothing else up here. What is this Shrine of Healing? Cool. stuff it's a lot of gold that now drops uh, I don't know okay there is a, a cave back here that I want to do so that I don't I guess I don't have to backtrack too much all right pick up all the stuff your inventory is full oh it is okay can I Tetris this I can. Back to Memphis. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't haggle. Not these days. <laughs> oh. Bloodthirsty throw stick of destruction. <laughs> Man, I, I love this. I might make a throwing character just for the throw stick. Okay. Um. Gods protect you. And then visit the caravan. Good day. Good day, then. <laughs> Guy is so cheery. What? 
Bye then. Two and a half million gold. Thieves. Okay, I'm more than halfway done. Mm. Alright, there's the, the fountain up there. Which means after this cave, we're gonna head there and then call the stream. Let's see if anyone is streaming at this hour so that we can raid someone. <laughs> we'll have to see. Shrine of experience. What are you? Holy. Hardy? That's that's another of those uh, plus strength, plus health, like percent strength, percent health things. That's uh, massive. Okay, fully use the uh, uh, experience shrine. Nice. I got three bars into the next level already. This is this is going quick. And it does feel a lot easier now that I don't have uh six curses on me and only two. Let me just see what it does, because I'm curious. Yeah. <laughs> it's just so powerful. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I can actually afford to like tank a couple of hits from that that fire dude without immediately dying. <laughs> um, makes a huge difference. Oh, I have minus five percent instead of minus like sixty six percent. That's yeah, the, the difference is palpable. <laughs> Heavy wooden door. Oh, and it's the it's the next town even. Very fine crates. Keep your goods safe. Ha! Huh. That's cool. Okay, let me just put all my stuff away then. Um. And then let me sell my stuff, and then... Mage armor, staffs, potions. Buy or leave, don't dawdle. Okay. Bye. Bye. Okay, and because this is the next fountain, we're already... Ah! In, in the next town. Dang, okay. Um... Right. So, I am going to uh, call the stream here. Made quite a lot of good progress. Let me just exit out of this. Alright, we made a lot of good progress today. We're almost done with chapter 2. This went really smoothly. Um, I'm... 
I'm surprised how well that went. Okay. Uh... Let's see. Twitch. Okay. So yeah, thank you everyone who came by. Thank you. Uh, let me see who it was. Seal and uh, Megami Infini for the raids. Um, and let's check who is on and whom we can raid. Ooh. I'm thinking. Yeah, Wait, let me see. Uh, how long has this been going? Three hours? Mm, might end soon, actually. How long has this been going? 30 minutes. All right. We are going to raid Professor Maui, who is a really, really kind person, really friendly, um, very flirty as well. <laughs> so if you're, so do do watch yourselves. Um, he is currently playing Sable, which is another pretty chill game. Uh, so probably just the right vibes. So yeah. Uh, let me let me get this correct. Raid Professor Maui. Is the name right? Yes, the name is right. Okay. Start raid. Awesome. Yes, so again, thank you everyone who came by. Uh it's great to be back. <laughs> I've missed all of you. Uh, and yeah, I will hope to see you again soon. I have my uh, Blades in the Dark happening on Wednesday. And I'm probably going to have Phasmophobia happening on Thursday. And maybe one or two other streams this week. So yeah, thanks everyone. Take care and bye-bye. Stay hydrated. <laughs>